It's the silver anniversary of Valdosta State football with sensational players making breathtaking moves on way to conference and national championships. Greeting from Batesmore Hyder Stadium at historic Cleveland Field here on the campus of Valdosta State University as VSU TV proudly presents the 2006 edition of Blazer Football. Today, Gulf South Conference action kicks off for the unblemished and fifth ranked Blazers as the equally undefeated and nationally ranked Wonder Boys of Arkansas Tech University comes into Valdosta for the first time since 2002. The 18th ranked Wonder Boys are coming off an overtime win versus West Georgia, while VSU is eager to get back on the field after their only bye week of the season last week. Taking a look at the standings in the Gulf South Conference, Henderson State with a win over West Alabama Thursday, sits at 2-0 in Gulf South Conference play, 3-1 overall in the season. Arkansas Tech sits at 3-0 on the season, 1-0 in Gulf Co South Conference play. Already has an in-conference win versus West Georgia last week. This is the first Gulf South Conference meeting for Valdosta State, and North Alabama at 2-0 is putting up some serious numbers early on in this young season. With my partner Dustin Swedelson, my name is Neil Folger. Now Dustin, Arkansas Tech and Valdosta State come into today's contest as two of the best looking Gulf South Conference teams in the early season. Aside from the obvious matchups, what are some hidden keys for victory for VSU in today's ball game? Well, we have number five in the nation in the Valdosta State Bla Blazers taking on the Wonder Boys at number 18 in the nation with Zach Parker going to be a big, big key player for the Blazers today. His sure hands and the tight defensive defenders against Cedric Jones and Derek Tharp and Jason Lovingsheimer and Delvin Ellis should make it so that Parker will have some beneficial mismatches downfield. He probably has the best hands on the team, and he and Copeland should be hooking up all day long. Obviously, also, there's an important factor about the turnovers in today's ballgame as well. Arkansas Tech actually gives away one more turnover a game than they take away. And also looking at that sort of kind of play, both teams just give up a ton of penalties. Whichever team can give up the fewest amount of penalties and finally be tamed here in this young season should prevail in this game. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the Vadasta State starting lineups. First of all, starting with the hatch attack, the Blazer offense. Started at X receiver, a six foot freshman, number eight, the sensational Cedric Jones. Starting at left tackle in today's ball game will be junior number 64, Joss Edison. At left guard will be a 250 pound freshman, number 77, Teddy Morris. Snapping the ball to Willie Copeland will be 5'11", junior number 50, Rooster Russell. At right guard, a 6'3", 285-pound sophomore, number 66, Takaris Leakes. And at right tackle, a 6'4", 300-pound junior, number 50, 56, Gerald Davis. At wide receiver will be the aptly maimed Zach Parker. At H receiver today, in, in today's ballgame, will be 6'3", 190-pound junior, Derek Tharp. Leading the hatch attack today will be 5'11", 184-pound junior, number 13, Willie Copeland. At running back today will be 175-pound sophomore, number 20, Chad Bryant. And at H receiver today, 5'10", 163-pound senior, the leader, number four, Tyler Arndt. Taking a look at the Blazer Black Swarm defense today, at defensive end will be number 47, Travis Harrison. At defensive tackle slash crowd motivator, number 90, Joshua Bass. At nose tackle will be Jermell Daniels out of Thomasville County Central. At linebacker, the money man, Lavar's Dollar. At outside linebacker, the 215-pound freshman, Joseph McCanley. At inside linebacker, William Montford, who is out of Crisp County. At outside linebacker, number 37, Gio Blaylock, who is the backbone of this Blazer defense. At left cornerback, Blakely County's own Sean Harris. At Rover, sophomore out of Powder Springs, Georgia, Mr. Everett Kitchens. At free safety, the speedster, Sherard Reynolds. And at right cornerback, the man of many traits out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Maurice Leggett. Kicking the ball in today's game for the Blazers will be a six-foot sophomore, number 41, Zach Williams. Doing the punting duties today and doing a very fine job on the year will be number 86, Stephen Wright. And Sherard Reynolds will also line up to receive the punts and the kicks. Coming up next, live action of Arkansas Tech versus Valdosta State for Parents Weekend here on VSU TV. Christopher, your word is sipic. 
Could you use it in the sentence, please? In the unlikely event that your brokerage firm goes out of business, CIPIC is there to protect you. CIPIC. C I O. Don't know about CIPIC, the Securities Investor Protection Corporation? That's okay. We can spell it out for you. Learn more at www.sipc.org. I got a ham sandwich and some pretzels. You want some pretzels? Nah, I'm trying to some cookies or something. Like what? I don't know. Like an orange. Forget it. Hey, Jay, you got anything? Don't ask Jay. Why not? Jay never has me. What's up with that? Are you on a diet or something? Yeah, a diet. Jay's on a diet. That's all right, man. We, we understand. My mom's on a diet. <laughs> 25 years. Five Gulf South Conference championships, 30 All-Americans, more than 100 All-Conference players, and the 2004 National Championship. Valdosta State Blazer football. Blazer tickets are now available in the BSU Athletic Department, or you can call 333-5890. Join this fall's silver celebration as your Blazers celebrate 25 years of building championship football. Call 333-5890. Welcome back here on VSU TV as we get you set for Gulf South Conference football. It's Arkansas Tech. It's Valdosta State. And it's September 23rd, 2006 here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. And we are set to bring you the opening game of the Gulf South Conference action. Should be a heck of a game. Valdosta State is in the black jerseys with the silver helmet, silver pants, commemorating the silver anniversary of football. Arkansas Tech in white with gold trim and gold helmets. Here we go. Chad Gallahan is set to kick it off for the Blazers. And we are underway here from Baysmore Hyder Stadium as Tracy Steiger returns to kick and he's got room. He's still moving. He's finally brought down at about the 28, 29 yard line. There is a flag on the play. Looks like there's a flag on the play. Let's see if this is gonna be brought back. Might be on Valdosta State. It is gonna be a holding call on the Wonder Boys. Okay. It was actually an illegal block in the back on the Wonder Boys, so that will move the ball back for the Wonder Boys as they begin their opening drive. Wonder Boys have one of the Gulf, has one of the conference's best offenses here. As you see a five wide receiver formation, something the Blazers have not seen at all, all year, as Justin Ray is behind center right now. He's also a very quick winner, there he goes. And that's why the Blazers stuff him right there. Number 37, who is that? That is Mr. Gio Blaylock, who Coach Anders has full faith in at linebacker. He just knows this defense inside and out. He gets through the line of scrimmage and takes him down for a loss of five on the play. This Wonder Boy offense is averaging about 190 yards, both running the football and passing the football. So we have a little screen pass set out, and Arkansas Tech almost tries to get it, and eventually, yep, eventually, Leggett stripped that ball, but it looks like when he stripped it, he was out of bounds. RJ Van Hook was the receiver on that play. Here on the play, Ray drops back, finds his running back on a screen, gets a huge block on Maurice Leggett, who sticks with the play and does end up getting the ball loose, but ends up tossing it out of bounds. Third and one to go for the Wonder Boys. Hand off to Van Hook, and he's got the first down, and he's got more. Weaving his way through Blazer traffic, and he's going to be stopped at the 34-yard line, first and 10, Arkansas Tech. This Wonder Boy offense is very, very potent. They can do many things. Here's the replay as we see R.J. Van Hook break a tackle on Maurice Leggett and gain a few extra yards running over Sherrod Reynolds, who eventually brings him down. Maurice Leggett tried to arm tackle him. Always got to go for the legs. First and 10 for Arkansas Tech at their own 34-yard line. Four receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Ray gets the snap, it's gonna be a blitz, and he is met immediately by a swarm of four Valdosta State defenders, and it is early in this game that Coach Ashley Anders is saying, 
Justin Ray is not going to run the football against our defense. Coach Anders knows when ju here's Justin Ray running and Anders' defense is set up perfectly because he knows Justin Ray is going to run the ball. Their other quarterback, number four, is Cole Barthel. He's more of a drop back and toss kind of quarterback. So you know what you're getting whether each one's in the game. Second down and 12, snap to Ray. Little shuffle pass is loose. It's ruled an incomplete pass there. Justin Ray looked like he was a little Great bit confused as to what the play calling was there. Fans coming out in full support to see their Blazers. First time in action in two weeks. They were off last week, their only bye week of the year. Three receivers to the far side, two to the near side for Justin Ray. Third and 12 to go from their own 32 yard line. Snap to Ray. Looking, looking, blitz is on, he finds him in. It is incomplete, intended on the play for Luther Stewart, the freshman receiver out of Prescott, Arkansas. And that brings up a fourth down. Some decent pressure on that play on Justin Ray by the Black Swarm defense, and now they'll be forced to punt it, and the Blazers now will get the ball. Back to receive is Sherrard Reynolds, the speedster. Good set for the Black Swarm defense, getting their first look at this potent Wonder Boy offense. Fourth and 12. Arkansas take almost doesn't give the punt away as it is, there's a penalty there. But Gerard Reynolds makes it and he's making moves. 45, 50, 45, down to the 40 yard line, but there is a penalty flag on the play. But still, you cannot give enough credit to what Gerard Reynolds does. Gerard Reynolds is arguably the fastest man on the field today and he just showed just how fast he really is on that return. There is a penalty flag on the play. Looks like there's a tripping call on. Here, here we see the replay of Sherrod Reynolds running that ball back to around the 50 yard line where he's finally touched by a Wonder Boy defender and brought down. At the snap, tripping against the offense. Tripping is indeed the call on Arkansas Tech. The Blazers will smartly very smart like to climb the penalty which gives them outstanding field position to work against this Arkansas Tech defense. Now Dustin, we talked before in the opening, Arkansas Tech's offense, one of the best in the league. Their defense on the other hand, not so much. Not so much, but you cannot overlook them and Willie Copeland in the past two games for the Blazers has gotten off to a slow start. So this should be an interesting matchup. This is the game deciding matchup right here. Handoff, up, oh, no, it's a fake to Chad Bryant. They're gonna throw their wide receiver screen to Cedric Jones, and he broke a tackle, is still on his feet down the 28-yard line. Copeland again finds his favorite target, target, Mr. Cedric Jones, on the wide receiver screen. Here he fakes the handoff to Chad Bryant, Number takes a few steps Copeland to his left, finds Cedric Jones, who picks up a couple Cedric blocks, Jones. and even runs through a defender there and picks up a few extra yards on the play, bringing up first and 10 on the 29 yard line. Five receiver formation for the Blazers, snap to Copeland. It's gonna be another wide receiver screen. He finds Zach Parker. It's gonna be taken down for about a two, three yard gain down at the 26 yard line. It seems like the Blazers are keeping it simple at the beginning. Two weeks ago against Fort Valley State, they were throwing a lot of deep balls early on and throwing a lot of incomplete passes. Maybe now Coach Hatcher is trying to get a few basic things settled in into that blazer, uh, into the blazer offense this week. Cedric Jones, Derek Tharp to the far side, Zach Parker to the near, snap to Copeland, looking to his left, finds Chad Bryant, and he's got room. 10, five, touchdown by Boston State. That's Rashawn not Robinson. Chad Bryant, that's Rashad Robinson. Six points for the Blazers as they draw first blood here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. A very nice play here, Copeland looks left, turns to the last second to his right to find Rashawn Robinson, who goes downfield and picks up some great, great blocks and gets in there for the end zone. Touchdown untouched for Rashawn Robinson. Zachary Williams in to attempt the PAT. It's up, it's good, and with that, it's seven nothing. It feels nice to say that in the first quarter. That was a very impressive drive, of course, you have to give a lot of credit to Sherrod Reynolds who gave Willie Copeland some great field position to start off that opening drive. And they were able to put seven points on the board early on. 11 minutes, 49 seconds to go in the first quarter. It is Valdosta State seven, Arkansas Tech zero. 
Dr. Victor Morgan of the VSU Counseling Center will present how to get a good night's sleep this Tuesday, September 26th from 4 to 5 p.m. in the University Union's Dogwood Room. Call 333-5940 for more information. Now, Dustin, we got some information here in the booth before the game started about how the mindset of Arkansas Tech might not be exactly on the football game. And understandably so, over in the area where Arkansas Tech is located. Russellville, Arkansas. Russellville, Arkansas. Uh, there, were seven, there was tornado activity last night, and obviously there's a lot more concern than football going on right Jack now. Callahan set the kickoff for the Blazers. Certainly our thoughts and prayers are with the Russellville community if, in fact, tornadoes Tracy's did touch down there. But let's hope that Arkansas Tech did come prepared because we want nothing but the best from these Wonder Boys. And th they're as good a team as we've faced so far this season, possibly the no, definitely the best team we faced this season. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off from the 35-yard line, and it is in the air. And it's a deep kick, and Tracy Steiger will take it, and he'll fumble it from about the one-yard line. It's not Steiger who has it, but it's Delvin Ellis, and he's taken down at about the 11-yard 11, 11 line, first and 10 for the Wonder Boys. You know, that name, Wonder Boys, there's a funny story behind that name as we watch the replay here. A little confusion back there in the end zone. Luckily for the Wonder Boys, they get it out. But that name, the Wonder Boys, was came about because in 1919, Arkansas Tech went in and beat a highly favored Jonesboro Aggies, which is now known as Arkansas State University. We'll get back to that story that. after the snap. Cole Barthel is now in at quarterback for the Wonder Boys. Four receiver formation. Handoff is to Van Hook, and he's going nowhere. Met at the line of scrimmage and driven back a yard, but they will mark forward progress at the 12-yard line. Going back to the story of how they got the name the Wonder Boys, they went in and beat the favorite Jonesboro Aggies, which you now know as Arkansas State University, 14-0. They were led by two 70-yard punt returns for touchdowns by Mr. Quarterback John Tucker then. And due to the amazing upset, they were then coined the Wonder Boys, and Tucker was the original Wonder Boy. And that name has stuck ever since. Four receivers for Arkansas Tech. Snap to Barthol, blitz is coming. He gets it away just in time. The pass is complete to number nine, Tracy Steiger. And he's taken out of bounds at about the 19, 20 yard line, which will bring up a third and short for the Wonder Boys. Here we see the replay. Barthol drops back, has a little bit of pressure coming from behind that he doesn't see. Finds his receiver, who gains a few yards on the play. Third down and one for Arkansas Tech. Three receivers to the near side, one receiver to the far side, one back in the formation for the Wonder Boys. Snap, Barthel calling an audible at the line of scrimmage. Badassa State showing a little bit of blitz. Antonio McCoy, the tailback in motion. And you've got a penalty. It looks like the lay of, it, it will be the lay of game called on the Wonder Boys. As we said earlier, both these teams accustomed to committing a lot of penalties. These are just mental mistakes that can't be made if you want to win a ball game. An important fact to remember is the more disciplined team that will win the, the more disciplined team today will probably be the one that escapes with a victory. Third down and six now after the delay game penalty. Four wide receiver formation. Snap to Barthel. Over the middle, it's going to be incomplete. He would have had the first down, but Barthel put a little too Great much emphasis on that pass intended for Robert Woods, Robert which brings Woods. down a fourth and six now for down. Arkansas Tech. That potent Arkansas Tech offense looks a little sluggish here early on, possibly a little tired from the commute all the way from Russellville. They did fly in this morning, got here about three hours before kickoff. Might be a little bit rusty getting out of the gates early, which is good for the Blazers. Fourth and six now as Arkansas Tech punts it away. Still great pressure there by the Blazers. So Rod Reynolds takes it as it's at his own 45-yard line. He's got blockers. Look out, guys. He's got an alley. 35, 25, 20. Down to the 14-yard line is Sherrard Reynolds. My, oh, my. We've seen it time and time again with Sherrard Reynolds. He is just as fast as it gets, giving Copeland even more great field position to work with. A 
another tremendous return here by Sherrard Reynolds. He gets the ball a little past the 50 yard line on his own side of the ball. He gets a, some great, great special teams blocking upfield by, you see number 34, Scott Palmer, number 49, Joseph McCauley, all leading the way for him. And he brings that ball all the way down <laughs> to the Wonder Boy 14 yard line. First and 10 for the Blazers. Five receiver formation, Chad Bryant in motion. Snap to Willie. Finds his man, it's Derek Thorpe who takes the lick at about the six yard line, which will bring up about a second down and two for Valdosta State. Again, not having to work downfield as much, Copeland drops back and finds Derek Tharp on the slant, who gains a few yards on the play. Second down and three for the Blazers. Cedric Jones, Derek Tharp, Tyler Arndt to the far side, Sherrod Reynolds to the near side. It is Sherrod, and he gets the pass, and he makes some players move, but I don't know what he was thinking. He had an alley wide open through the middle. He elected to take it back and lost some yards on the play. You know, it has been a while since Gerard Reynolds has lined up at wide receiver, so you can't put too much blame on him there. He was trying to make a big play out of nothing. Zach Parker's checking back in for Gerard Reynolds. Reynolds, of course, the converted wide receiver from last year to now a defensive back. Third down, third down and nine for Valdosta State at the Arkansas Tech 13 yard line. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Snap to Copeland, being pressured, finds Derek Tharp. He's got some room. He is down to about the five yard line. You can't blame Copeland for getting that ball away because he was pressured by about three or four Wonder Boy defensemen. And here we see Copeland drop back, finds Tharp again, and he gets some good blocking by Gerald Davis, number 56 there taking a defender down, as well as Joss Edison. Looks like Valasa State was thinking about going for it on fourth down, but coach Chris Hatcher decided to instead go for the easy points here because points in this game, they're probably going to be very key. He's keeping it very conservative early on, and it seems to be working as now they're kicking another field goal and scoring three more points on the board. Zach Williams did, in fact, knock that ball straight through the upright. So at 8 minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first quarter of play here at Baysmore Hydro Stadium. Barasa State has quickly got up 10 to nothing. So far, the impression on Arkansas Tech has been their offense, when faced with the Black Swarm, it hasn't moved anywhere. And it's a key matchup in this game. Their offense is as good as it gets. The Black Swarm defense is as good as it gets in the Gulf South Conference. And hopefully for the Wonder Boys, their offense can get it all together. We mentioned about the Wonder Boy offense, how they're third in the conference in scoring, third in total offense, second in rushing offense, fifth in passing offense. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on for head coach Steve Mullins and his Wonder Boys. And a tandem of two quarterbacks who are as good as any two quarterbacks in this conference. Without a doubt, Cole Barthel, Justin Ray are phenomenal players. Ray, the leading rusher for the Wonder Boys this season so far. And that's something you don't see unless a quarterback's name is Michael Vick. Absolutely. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off to Arkansas Tech, who are looking to try and get their first, first down conversion on the day. The ball is placed. Shai Gallahan set to kick it off here already with a 10 0 Blazer lead. The ball is in the air. So it's going to be caught at about the five yard line by Delvin Ellis, and he's got an alley, then tripped up at about the 20 yard line. We've got an injured Wonder Boy on the field. It's number 51. Nolan Johnson, the linebacker out of San Jose, California, who appears to be limping off on his own power, but still in a lot of pain. We saw on the replay, Elvis ran the ball back, actually had a quick burst of speed, but was tripped up. Had he not been tripped up, that could have been a huge gain for the special teams of the Wonder Boys. Justin Ray is now back in the quarterback for Arkansas Tech. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side, a linebacker, a running back in the backfield, Handoff is to Antonio McCoy, and he'll take about three, four yards on the play. Number five, Antonio McCoy with the carry. There you see Justin Ray 
getting in the play call for this next play from head coach Steve Mullins in his 10th year at the Russellville, Arkansas School. Second down and seven to go for Valdosta State. Snap is Dre, who fumbles it a bit, gives it off to RJ Van, no, excuse me, Antonio McCoy, who runs for about four or five yards. And brought down by the freshman, Joseph McCauley. A lot of teams switching in a lot of players in today's game, probably to keep a lot of the players hydrated because it is a very hot afternoon here in Valdosta, Georgia. You have to wonder if that's gonna affect a lot of the game later on in the third and fourth quarter when teams will be pushing to get some extra points on the board. Third down and three from their own 27 yard line for the Wonder Boys, snap to Ray. Handoff is to Antonio McCoy and he's going nowhere. Stopped in the backfield by Bo May, the junior defensive lineman out of Apex, North Carolina. Here's the handoff from Ray to number five, Antonio McCoy, and he's just met by number 57, Bo May, who just absolutely broke through the line of scrimmage, untouched, and brought down the running back. He beat his guard on the play, center B.J. Tilly for Arkansas Tech, and right away, Arkansas Tech's offense finding it very, very difficult to move against this Black Swarm defense. I am shocked, Neil. It is blocked, the it's punt is blocked. blocked. And it's gonna be recovered in the end zone for, for a, a Valdosta State touchdown. And right off the bat, look at how aggressive the Valdosta State Blazers are in this game. The Wonder Boys look sluggish, Neil. That is the third consecutive time on a punt the Blazers have gotten that close to the ball. And this time they finally make contact and Sean Harris recovers it in the end zone for a touchdown. I think Maurice Leggett might have either blocked it or recovered it in the end zone. I believe it was number nine, Sean Harris did score the touchdown there, and just like that, with hopefully an extra point here, it is 17, it's blocked. The extra point is indeed blocked, so a little bit of, the ball is still alive, and finally it is brought down at about the 14 yard line, but still, a lot of action in the first, not even the first 10 minutes of action here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. I, I'm still shocked at the play of the Wonder Boy offense. This is a great offense. This is a very good offense, Neil. And they just can't seem to get anything started. You know Chris Hatcher, who we see on our screen now, is not happy with that blocked extra point. But you know he is happy with that blocked punt. So we're now, we're standing at six minutes and six seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. With the Blazers already up 16 to nothing as every single cheerleader waving that VSU flag Proud. For your weekly dose of nostalgia, listen to Lest We Forget as Skip Gildersleeve brings the past to life. WVVS 90.9 Blaze FM celebrates over 30 years of music on the edge every Sunday at 9 p.m. until midnight. For requests, call 333-5661. Again, Dustin, and also in the second it's quarter, amazing to see how State. intense the Blazer team has come out and how sluggish, how lazy, how unprepared the I Arkansas know, Tech team is. I don't know if it's unprepared. They, they do look very sluggish in, that, in this Valdosta heat. I wonder if that's taking a toll on them as well as the thoughts back in Russellville. But this is a good offense who really needs to make a statement here and not go down by three scores. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off for Valdosta State. Tracy Steiger and Delvin Ellis deep to receive it for the Golden Green Wonder Boys. And the ball is up in the air as it's gonna be Tracy Steiger who gets it one yard deep. He's gonna bring it out and he will get met by Blazers and be down at the 22 yard line. Tracy Steiger with the return, he's tripped up by number seven. Here we see on the replay, Steiger gets the ball out of the end zone, brings it back to about the 35 yard line. Hopefully for the Wonder Boys now, Justin Ray can get something going and get part of his rushing attack going because he really hasn't had anything to work with so far and he is their leading rusher. Three receivers to the, near, to the far side. One to the near side, RJ Van Hook in motion to the near side. Snap is to gonna be to Justin Ray and he's gonna run it. He's got some blockers. He's gonna take downfield and be tackled. Out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Surprised there that a late 
Tate is not called. The Arkansas Tech faithful who have followed their team from Russell, from Russellville obviously upset at the no call. Here Ray rolls out to his left, cannot find anyone. I really don't think he was ever actually looking to make a pass. Gets a huge, huge block there and picks up the first down. That definitely should have been a late hit. The Blazers got away with one there. First and 10 for the Wonder Boys at the 33 yard line. Handoff is to Ray and this time he's met at the line. Another great job of penetration by that Blazer Black Swarm D-line. It's pretty much a sure thing here as we see Ray running the ball. It's a sure thing that when he's back there as the quarterback for the Wonder Boys that he's going to run the ball or hand it off in a running play. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Josh Myers in motion. Snap is to Ray. There's gonna be flags on the play. Or, or it looks like that Valdosta State has called a timeout. And we'll be back with the rest of the first quarter action here on BSU TV right after this. Do you know how many kids are risking their health by eating unhealthy foods, stuffing themselves, and not getting any exercise? Thank goodness. You got here just in time. Where's the problem? In there. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Here, try this the original fast food. Doctors know that our children need a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, high fiber vegetarian foods to help them grow up healthy. Call for a free booklet or visit kidsgethealthy.org. Welcome back here on VSU TV as Arkansas Tech is set to be on second down and 11 to go from their own 32 yard line. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Snap is to Ray, he's got it. He's looking deep, he's going deep. He's got a man tipped by Sherrod Reynolds at the last second. That is why he is a valuable defensive back. Ray surprised everyone here, looking like he was going to actually take the ball himself. Gets a decent block there by number eight, Chris Gunter, his wide receiver, and tries to find his man in single coverage, but Sherrod Reynolds just get his, gets his fingertips on the ball to break up the play. Sherrod Reynolds once again everywhere for the Blazers early on. Three receivers to the far side, two to the near side for Justin Ray, a five receiver formation. Ray takes the snap, under pressure, goes over the middle, incomplete pass intended for number 41, Justin McCutcheon. But of course, that's gonna be an incomplete pass and will bring up fourth down for the Wonder Boys. And again, three downs and out for this powerful offense for Arkansas Tech. They just cannot seem to get a flow going or any kind of rhythm. Ray and his receivers cannot seem to find each other. And it looks like Sherrod Reynolds is back to return this punt again. Nick McCaskill is back to punt it away for Arkansas Tech. Already seeing very good action in today's ball game. Again, Sean Harris almost gets the block on that play. Sherrod Reynolds is going to let that ball roll, and it's going to take a drop and be dead at the 36-yard line of the Blazers. Now, we mentioned before, Oh, we got some information before, Dustin, that Valdosta State is one of the nation's best teams at field position. They get the ball to start the game at around their own 30 to 35 yard line. Their opponents, on the other hand, they're starting at the 20, at the 15, sometimes inside the 10. So that's a credit to the special teams coaches and their players. Of course. Very much, very much so. Michael Terry in the motion. It's going to be a bobble snap. Copeland picks it up. It's going to be drilled at the 25-yard line, one of the only plays that Arkansas Tech Faith will have to cheer for in this first quarter of action. It's going to be about a 10-yard loss. It'll bring up around second down and 20 to go for the Blazers. Derek Tharp lined up far side. Look out for him. Snap's going to be thrown. It's gonna be caught. He's gonna get about eight, nine yards on the play, and that was Travis Taylor, the wideout out of Vienna, Georgia. Here on the replay, Taylor picks up the ball, gets it, stumbles a little bit, but eventually does pick up the first, the, brings us to second down for the Blazers. Third down and about 13 to go for the Blazers. Travis Taylor to the near side, Derek Tharp. Cedric Jones to the far side. 
Derek Tharp now in motion to the near side. Copeland takes the snap. Pressure coming. Audacity State picks it up over the middle. He's got a man. It's Travis Taylor who gets hit on the play. And it looks like that is going to be. They're talking. They're talking. I'm not sure if Taylor ever came down with the ball and had full possession of it. So if they're going to say it's a VSU first down on the play. What might have happened here is he was touched when he hit the ground. As soon as his knee hit the ground after receiving the pass, Taylor is down, and they're saying that the ball came out after he was already down. According to the replay, the replay says otherwise. And now I believe they've made the right call on the play. It is, in fact, going to be a first down for the Wonder Boys as Chris Hatcher sees a turnover and a golden opportunity to extend this lead go by the wayside. What was a big play now may turn into a big momentum shift for the Wonderboy offense who's looking to get something going right now. Cole Barthel taking the snaps again for the Wonderboy offense. He sees it. He's going deep. He's got a man. It's going to be incomplete on the play. Another great job of defense there by the Black Swarm secondary Maurice Leggett, more specifically. Barthel with the good arm dropped back on the play, and the play was broken off by Leggett, who just barely got his hand in between the two hands of the receiver trying to make the catch. There you see Coach Ashley Andrews, the defensive coordinator for the Blazers, spitting out instructions for his black swarm. Blazers showing blitz, but they're rushing five. Pass is going to be thrown out to the near side here. The pass is complete to number 89, Josh Rogers, for about a six-yard gain. It'll bring up third and four for the Wonder Boys at the Badasta State 46-yard line. And Dustin, you're thinking to yourselves, the Wonder Boys have to capitalize on this drive because they were given excellent field position by the Badasta State turnover. With Barthel in the game, he's really on the same page with his receivers. Four wide receiver formation for the Blazers. They're showing blitz, and it looks like they picked it up, and he spits through the backfield. That is number 82, Robert Woods, the, wide, the junior wide receiver from Dardanelle, Arkansas, who picks up a Wonder Boy first down. By the time the Black Swarm Blitz got in, the offensive line was already blocking downfield and allowed the receiver to get all the way into the secondary on that play, picking up the first down. There you see the Arkansas Tech coaching staff spinning out instructions for Barthel. Four wide receivers. For the Wonder Boys, handoff is going to be to Antonio McCoy. He got he has about five, six yards on the play with about two minutes to go in the first quarter. Barthel is looking to get some points on the board for the Wonder Boy offense who do not want to be shut out in the first quarter of the game today. Barthel is leading the team in passing with about 152 yards per game. Four receivers in the formation here. Barthel takes a snap, looking deep, almost intercepted, and going to be incomplete on the play, intended for number 28, Marcus Arnold, who looks like he's in an offense. Normally lining up at cornerback on the defense. Third down and three for the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys. Jumbo formation in for the Wonder Boys. Barthel takes the snap, feeling the pressure, rolling around. And he's going to go down, and it looks like he might have twisted his knee. Well, from up here, it looks like his knee had twisted, and he went down, but might have been just he didn't want to get sacked by that Blazer defense. He gets up fine, and he's looking for the play call right now from his coaches, trying to put a point on with a minute 34 left in this first quarter. Looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down and 12 from the Valdosta State 31-yard line. Five receivers as Barthel takes the snap, feeling the blitz. Down he goes, number 95, Chris Jones from Jessup, Georgia, comes through untouched and gets Cole Barthel for the sack. Just tons of pressure. Jones went in untouched and was too quick for Barthel to get away or make a play. That is a huge, Huge upsetting play for the Wonder Boys, as now they don't even put three points on the board in that drive. And the Blazers don't have terrible field position at the 41-yard line. Again, the Blazers show their resilience. Last year's, or 2004's defense of Ben Don't Break comes in again. 
this year, much more physical, but still, they haven't allowed a touchdown in really the entire year. No. First and 10 for the Blazers. Four wide receivers. Handoff is to Chad Bryant. He's got some room. He's get about, gets about one yard on that play. As we are under a minute to go here in the first quarter of play, 16 nothing about Austin State is your score. Derek Tharp, Zach Parker to the near side, Tyler Arndt, Travis Taylor to the far, Cedric Jones to the far side. It's going to be Cedric Jones who gets it. I look out. He's got speed. He's down the sideline. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Blazers. Cedric Jones with a huge play on the wide receiver screen. We've seen him do it time and time again on the screen, taking it downfield for a huge play. Copeland's favorite target. Another wide receiver screen ends up to be another 60, 65 yard touchdown pass for wide screen, wide screen happy Chris Hatcher. Zach Williams in to attempt the PAT. It is up, it is good. This time he makes sure he gets it to the upright. And with 24 seconds to go in the first quarter of play, Bada State is up 23 to nothing. Copeland looks very good, Neil. He decided this week to show up in the first quarter. I know. He's been a slow starter the past two games this season against Albany State and Fort Valley State. Fort Valley State was understandable. It was his former team. He just transferred to Valdosta from there. But he's on page with the receivers. I don't think he's thrown an incomplete pass yet. If he's thrown incomplete passes, they've been far placed out. They've been placed out like every other fifth pass or so. But on, this, but on the opposite side of the field, what are you thinking if you're Arkansas Tech? You're thinking you need to put some points on the board now at the end of the first quarter, going into the second quarter, going into the half, at least get 10 points on the board because th this offense is good enough to come back from this. This offense is good enough to come back from a 23-point deficit. Is it good enough to come back against the Varasa State defense? That's the question. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off. Already his fourth kickoff of the afternoon. We haven't even made it past the first quarter. He's busy today. He is very busy today. I still can't get over how Cedric Jones turned on the afterburners for that 65-yard touchdown pass. It's like he has rockets on the back of his shoes or something. The freshman has a knack for making big plays. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off. Tracy Steiger, Delvin Ellis. In the backfield as the ball is in the air. It is going to be Travis Steiger who takes it at his goal line. Makes some Blazers miss, but is ultimately met by, looks like he's met by number six, Eric Williams, who just pushes him into the ground. This Blazer defense needs to stay hungry. They cannot give up anything here. This offense has the ability to drive downfield and put up 23 points in the next quarter. The they certainly do, and that's why the Blazer defense has to be on their toes, which you know Coach Anders is going to have them do. Three receivers bunched to the near side, one receiver to the far side. RJ Banhook in the backfield, Cole Barthel taking the snaps. And it looks like that's going to be the end of the first quarter here, and what a quarter it was as Valdosta State is up 23 0. We'll be right back here on VSU TV right after this. There's a naval battle being fought on land by forces armed only with commitment and compassion. Because every day, Navy volunteers combat homelessness, hunger, loneliness, and illiteracy by initiating community programs that touch people's lives. And while their exploits aren't honored with medals, it's hard to imagine a more moving tribute. Welcome back to BSU TV. As Cole Barthel takes the snap, looking, looking, he's gonna be pressured, and he ultimately is looking for number 84, Mark Caldwell. Rule incomplete pass. More pressure on Barthel in this game as he cannot seem to get anything going. Last drive, he looked very good, bringing them all the way downfield, but unfortunately, they walked away with no points. Second down and 10 to go for the Wonder Boys at their own 20 yard line. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. 
Josh Rogers in motion, snap to Barthel, looking, looking, being pressured. Incomplete pass intended for Josh Rogers being pressured on that play by none other than number 37, Gio Blaylock. Gio Blaylock tons of pressure as, as well as Chris Jones who just broke through that offensive line basically untouched. Third down and 10 to go for the Wonder Boys at their own 20 yard line. Just starting action here in the second quarter of play, 23 nothing. Alaska State is up in this contest. Five receiver formation for Cole Barthel. He takes the snap. He's being pressured. He's throwing it up. It is going to be incomplete on the play intended for his tailback, RJ Vanhook. And again, Blazer defense comes up and stuffs the Wonder Boy offense. The Blazer defense did look good on a few plays there, Neil. But on that last play, that was just Barthel not on the same page as his receiver, overthrowing him. Sherrard Reynolds was also blitzing on that play from the near side of the field, and maybe Barthel saw him in his, in his sight and said, uh-oh, I don't want to take a hit from that man. And here, there he is, back to return the punt, Gerard Reynolds. The punt from Nick McCaskill, and that time he gets it off a little bit better, but it is high, and it doesn't have any distance at all. As Gerard Reynolds is going to let that ball take a bounce, and it's, da and it's down by Arkansas Tech at their own 42-yard line. So again, outstanding field position for Willie Copeland and this Blazer offense who has looked extremely well in the first quarter of play. Willie Copeland's success has come with this great field position he's been getting the past few weeks. And again, with the ball at the 42-yard line, Willie Copeland has just a little bit of field to work with to put some points on the board in the red zone of the Wonder Boy uh, defense. Derek Tharp. Zach Parker and Chad Bryant to the far side. Tyler Arndt, Cedric Jones to the near side for the Blazers. Willie Copeland takes the snap. Going to be a wide receiver screen intended for Zach Parker, who just was looking downfield and not looking the ball into his hands. Something you don't see every day. Zach Parker not making a catch that hits his fingertips. Usually the very sure-handed receiver slash tight end for the Blazers could not come up with that play. Same formation for the Blazers, five receivers. Willie Copeland takes the snap. He's finding Zach Parker, and that time you see those agile and dependable hands as he gets about a six-yard gain for Valdosta State. The ball was thrown behind him, and Parker made some great adjustments there to make the play and gain yards for the Blazer offense. He looks like another very tall wide receiver in the nation, Calvin Johnson, for that catch. <laughs> Three receivers bunched to the near side. Zach Parker to the far side. And looks like it's going to be an offside penalty because the play is still going on. Willie Copeland rolling, finds Zach Parker, who takes a beating, but picks up the first down at the 29-yard line of the Wonder Boys. Some odd movement on the line of scrimmage there from both sides. And the reason why I say offsides is because usually if it's an, a false start on the offense, the rest will blow the play dead. If it's a offsides on the defense, the rest will let the play go and see what develops. I honestly did see movement on the Wonder Boy side of the ball, but I did think that a couple offensive linemen for the Blazers jumped early. At the snap, defense the call is indeed the offsides on the Wonder Boys and results in a first down, or the play results in a first down for Valdosta. Cedric Jones, Tyler Arndt to the near side. Zach Parker, Derek Tharp to the far side. Rashawn Robinson in the backfield. 23-0 Valdosta State, 13-30 to go in the second half. As the ball is was intended to be shoveled to Rajon Robinson, but the Wonder Boy defensive line said not in this house, which doesn't make any sense because it's our house. Sort of. Sort of. Coach Hatcher trying to signal in some unique play calls to his quarterback, Willie Copeland. Who's keeping it simple today who's keeping it very simple against this Arkansas Tech defense. Richard Robinson in motion, snap to Copeland. He's looking, he's looking, he's gonna find his receiver and it is Cedric Jones who's gonna be taken out of bounds at about the 13, 12 yard line. Good enough for a Blazer first down. Great route running there by Cedric Jones who made an adjustment on the play after being denied of his original route. Willie, Willie Copeland was rolling out to his left. He saw Cedric Jones stopped in his tracks and then was signaling, go, 
go, and he, and he nailed him. With now a it looks like there's another blocker in on the play, Scott Palmer. Lining up at fullback, the handoff to Michael Terry. Michael comes around Terry's right. getting the handoff. He's got blockers. He's got an alley. He's taken down at the two-yard line. It will be almost another Laudasa State first down. Is there is an Arkansas Tech player injured on the field? We'll be back here on VSU TV with the rest of the second quarter action right after this. A beautiful university under the palms and pines of South Georgia. Just above the Florida border. Halfway between Atlanta and Orlando. We are Valdosta State University. A standing academics, a show place for the arts. And the home of champions. Vision. Success. And you. Prepare for your world. By coming to ours. Building for our next century. Valdosta State University. Welcome back here on VSU TV. The injured Arkansas Tech Wonder Boy was defensive back Leonard King. We'll have an update for you when we get it. Copeland is behind Rooster Russell this time as the Blazers are going to roll out and throw for the touchdown to Travis Taylor, his first touchdown catch of the year. And Valdosta State is continuing to roll, steamroll, pound, any other adjective you can describe to score points against Arkansas Tech. Willie Copeland and his receivers are keeping it short but sweet, and it's working as now they're up 29-0 as Zach Williams lines up for the extra point. Snap, good, hold, good, kick, good. So with 12 minutes, 49 seconds to go in the first half of play, your score, Valdosta State 30. Arkansas Tech, nothing. It's amazing how Chris Hatcher decides to go under center for the one time all year, and he still doesn't run the ball. Still doesn't run the ball. But at 30 nothing, I can't argue with any of his play calling right now. Oh, if you're up 30 nothing and you're good and you're continuing to move the ball as fast and as effective as Valdosta is, I wouldn't change a single thing. With 12 minutes, 49 seconds to go in the half, still early in the second quarter, it's a serious time for the Wonder Boy offense. They need to put some points up on the board we just for their own heads, just to keep them in the game. We need to see why they are one of the league's best offenses right now. It looks like Valdosta State is taking them to the house. They've just shown minimal spurts of being a very good offense today. Hopefully, Barthel or Ray can get something going here. Every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m., listen to WVVS 90.9 FM, Blaze FM for the X's and O's show. Join AMAC, Big Red, Fat Flyer, and resident phone yank Tall B as they bring you Valdosta's only rock talk sports radio program, six years and running. Call in with your sports opinions at 333-5661. The X's and O's show, drop talk without the itch. RJ Van Hook and Tracy Steiger deep to receive the kickoff for Arkansas Tech, Chad Gallahan and the Blazers special teams set to kick it off. 30 nothing, Valasta State is your score in this contest as Chad Gallahan makes contact and the ball is in the air. It's gonna be Tracy Steiger who takes it at about his three yard line. He's got some blockers, but then is ultimately going to be tackled down Tracy at about Steiger the 26 the yard line. As the Arkansas Tech Warner Boy offense takes the field again, Justin Ray is now back in at quarterback Arkansas for Arkansas Tech. First and, 10 at their own and it appears that line. neither quarterback is making this offense work against Ashley Anders' defense. Seems like Anders has Ray's number. It looked like Barthel actually had more success, but both had limited success with just spurts of uh, excellence against the Blazer Black Swarm. Take the fan off. Justin Ray's got an opening. He's taken down at the 31-yard line. It'll be about a 7-8 yard gain on the play the for the sophomore quarterback out of Benton, Arkansas. Ray is quick. And the problem with running when you're down by 30 points still in the first half is that it eats up a little more clock as during incomplete passes, the play will not be stopped and it's a more tedious job. And he hands the ball off to his running back 
number 20, Sean O'Connor, who was brought down by the Black Swarm defense, and now that'll bring up third down and four to go. Manassa State's defense eager to make more stops. As there you see Coach Chris Hatcher kneeling on the sideline. He does not do a lot with the defense. It's all up to Coach Anders and his defensive assistants as they're trying to get their team to stop a third down and two as Ray again takes the snap. And he's gonna leap over the huddle and pick up the first down at about the 37, 38 yard line. Only the second or third first down all day for the Wonder Boys. The Black Swarm Blazer defense cannot get complacent with this lead. They need to try to preserve this shutout and give Willie Copeland as many points to work with today. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Handoff is gonna be to number 20, Sean O'Connor. And he is gonna be tackled right at the 50 yard line. And Arkansas Tech trying to find some offensive rhythm here. As they now find themselves with the new down, first and 10 at the 50 yard line. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Tracy Steiger in motion for Justin Ray. He pump fakes, he's going deep. He's got a man, it's gonna be incomplete intended on the play for Tracy Steiger and Dustin, the play action pump fake, bought Justin Ray some extra time there. Unfortunately for Ray though, he threw to the ball where the safety was coming over to help out Leggett who was in single coverage at the time and deflect the pass from being completed, preventing the first down. You saw there Coach Anders barking out instructions for his Black Swarm defense. Second and 10 for the Wonder Boys. Justin Ray fakes the handoff, has some room, taken down at the 43 yard line, a gain of seven on the play. And Justin Ray finding some holes in that offensive line of his. You have to wonder how fresh this Blazer defense is. They need to keep fresh with all the subs, but keep in mind, they're wearing black jerseys today. They have a better understanding of the temperature here, obviously, than Arkansas Tech does. Third and three, handoff is gonna be to number 20, Sean O'Connor, and he's not gonna get the first down as he was met immediately by some Black Swarm members, including number 97, Melvin Black, and 47, Travis Sean Harrison. And again, the Black Swarm prevents any points being put on the board from the Wonder Boys, and Arkansas Tech is forced to punt here, Neil. Arkansas Tech's heads are definitely hanging on their sideline, as it is now fourth down and four to go, with 10 minutes to go in the first half of play. Nick McCaskill set to punt it away to Sherrard Reynolds, who is standing at his own 10-yard line. First time in a long time he's actually gotten some punching protection, as that ball is gonna take an Arkansas Tech bounce and go inside the 10 yard line and it will be down at the Valdosta State six yard line. That's where Willie Copeland and the Blazer offense will take over. Is the future of VSU volleyball looking brighter? The Blazer Sports reports Holly Willis has that story coming up at the half in about nine minutes from now. Neil, you know, I'm not a fan of the quarterback by committee just because I feel a quarterback can never get a real rhythm going. But in this case, when you have two quarterbacks of this caliber, I don't mind it as much. I, I fully expected the Wonder Boys to come out with a much more potent offensive attack. First and 10 for the Blazers at their own six yard line. Five receiver formation, gonna be faked off to Rashawn Robinson. Instead it's gonna be hit, thrown to Cedric Jones who gets about I want to say five yards on the play. Or excuse me, that looks like that pass was completed to Jeffrey Felton. First time we've heard and called his name on the day today. Second down and three to go for the Blazers at their own 13 yard line. Zach Parker, Jeffrey Felton on the far side, Cedric Jones, Tyler Arndt to the near side. It's gonna be caught by Cedric Jones, gets a great upfield block there by Tyler Arndt. And he's gonna pick up the first down at the 19, or excuse me, the 17, or excuse the 22 yard line, I'm off. <laughs> as we see, Willie Copeland is not off as he finds his favorite target again, Cedric Jones, to pick up the first down. It seems whenever he needs a critical play, he finds his man, number eight, Cedric Jones, the freshman. 
Chad Bryant, Michael Terry in the backfield, Cedric Jones, Zach Parker, Jeffrey Felton. It's going to be handed off to Chad Bryant. He's got room. 40 up to the 41 yard line, a gain of about 15 yards on the, on the play. Good enough for Valdosta State first down. Willie Copeland has not yet had to throw a deep ball, nor has he chosen to. It seems like he's just keeping it short but sweet, as we said earlier, and it's working as the Blazers continue to move downfield, approaching that 40-yard line. Willie Copeland's pass is going to be complete to Zach Parker, who was taken down at the 42-yard line, a gain of eight on the play. I'm not sure of the exact stats, but... I think Willie Copeland only has one incomplete pass as of right now in this game. Six yard gain on the pass brings up second, second down and four to go as Scott Palmer is now lined up as a receiver to the near side of the formation. That's going to cause some mismatches on other players. Scott Palmer has faked it. He almost looked like he was going to catch a pass, and instead it's Jeffrey Felton. Felton. He's got blockers, 15, 10, Five, taken out of bounds at the two yard line. What a play by head coach Chris Hatcher calling that in for Willie Copeland to execute. That great blocking downfield on the right side, the opposite side that Palmer, the usually great blocker, was on. And again, the screen goes for a ton of yards as the Blazers are deep in the Wonder Boy red zone with 7.43 to go in the second quarter. First down. Goal to go for the Valdosta State Blazers the at the, the Blazers two yard the line. Willie Copeland behind center. He's going to give it off. He's going to give it off to Michael, Michael Terry, Terry, who's touchdown. in for the end zone touchdown. touchdown. Blazers, the offensive rhythm just keeps on coming at a pace we have not seen all year. This offense is really clicking, making big plays out of set up small plays, really. These plays are not set up to be 35-yard runs, but they turn into it. Zach Williams, kick up. Perfect kick on the season. Good. Seven minutes, 38 seconds to go in the first half of play. Your new score, Valdosta State, 37. Arkansas Tech, zero. Does it make you feel like Valdosta State is at the top of the conference now with the way they're playing against a nationally ranked opponent? I'd have to say, if you're putting on a show like they're putting on right now against the number 18 team in the nation, they're gonna be moving up in the standings. They have to be the favorite in the Gulf South Conference if they can prevail. However, this game is far from over as we still have two quarters and seven minutes and 38 seconds to go in the second quarter here to go. For all the latest in national, state, and local news, catch News 11 in focus each Thursday at 3 and 10 p.m. on VSU TV. Again, that's News 11 each Thursday at 3 and 10 p.m. on VSU TV. We alluded in the opening about how Arkansas Tech's offense was superb and their defense wasn't at the same level. You think you see why now? Their defense was good, just not as good as the offense. But here, Willie Copeland is just putting on a show with his receivers today and really breaking down that Wonder Boy defense. When all the leading tacklers for the Wonder Boy defense are in the secondary, you know you've got some issues as the ball is in the air. Tracy Steiger will take it at his two yard line and he gets nowhere. Tackled before he reaches the 20 yard line and the Wonder Boys will take possession at the 19. Justin Ray coming back into the game as quarterback. He had a little bit of success running the ball that time, but again, the Blazers defense, when it matters the most, they stuff up that middle and don't allow anything to develop. Ray averages 74 yards per game. Maybe now he can finally get something going against this Black Swarm defense, who has been on the field quite a bit today. Five receiver formation for the Wonder Boys. Ray does get the snap, and he is met about two or three yards after the line of scrimmage. Tackled on that play by number 97, Melvin Black, the 220-pound defensive lineman from Apopka, Florida. And a Wonder Boy is down on the field, and we're going to take a break. We'll be back 
with the rest of the second quarter action here on VSU TV right after this. Guys, what do you got? Got a 28 year old black male, got three gunshot wounds to the chest. One upper chest, one lower chest, one center. Bleeding a lot. We're there are two paths a child can take. Sir, try not to move. We have a 28 year old male. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life. Welcome back here on VSU TV. Second down and seven to go for the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys. Josh Rogers in motion. Handoff is going to be to RJ Van Hook, and he'll take it up to about the 27 yard line. The injured player on the previous play was number 64. Big Brian Hardaway, the 6'2", 340-pound senior out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, one of the captains for this Wonder Boy team. Third down and seven to go for the, for the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys. Third and three, actually. Yeah. Four receivers formation. Justin Ray is going to find his man. It's complete to Tracy Steiger, and he's going to have the Wonder Boy first down at the 34-yard line of Arkansas Tech. Down by this large of a deficit this early, you have to wonder how much faith the Wonder Boy coaches have had in Cole Barthel, who can throw the deep ball over Justin Ray, who's more of a short play scrambling quarterback. You need to play catch up, and usually the best way to play catch up is through the air. Justin McCutcheon in motion. Handoff is going to be to RJ Van Hook, and he's met immediately in the backfield by number 37, Big Geo. Geo Blaylock read that play perfectly, did not fall for any fakes, and brought down the running back for a loss of four yards. Two receivers to the near side. One receiver to the far side for the Wonder Boys. As the offense is getting its instruction from the sideline. Three receivers bunched up to the near side. One receiver to the far side. RJ Van Hook in motion to the near side. Snap to Justin Ray. He's being pressured. He's going over the middle. He finds his man incomplete pass intended on that play for Justin McCutcheon. Justin Ray doesn't look comfortable throwing the ball. He's only completed about two or three passes on the afternoon. And those two or three passes were only from minimal gains. It's very tough to play catch up. As I said before, we don't have the threat of the deep ball going. Third down, 14 to go for the Wonder Boys at their own 30-yard line. Three receivers to the near side. Sean O'Connor in motion to the near side. Snap to Ray. He's over the middle. He finds his man. Incomplete pass intended for Robert, Ro Robert Woods. And Dustin, you've got to catch that pass. He's got to catch that pass, especially when they're just trying to put some points on the board going into the half just to get some kind of momentum. Justin Ray nailed him right in the hands, and he, couldn't hold, and he could not hold on to that ball. And now Nick McCaxel will come in to punt the ball away, who must be envious of Stephen Wright, the Blazer punter, who has had no work today. Tyler Arndt is now checked in into the game to receive the punt from Nick McCaskill. And again, an almost block there, and Nick McCaskill gets off his best punt of the day as Tyler Arndt takes it at his own 33-yard line, makes some moves, and is down at the Valasta State 46-yard line. The VSU Music Department and the Varasta Symphony Orchestra are presenting a salute to VSU presidents. Join presidents past and present for this gala opening commemorative concert this Saturday, September 30th at 8 p.m. in Whitehead Auditorium. For tickets, call 333-2150. Again, credit to the Blazers special team and defense for giving Willie Copeland some great field position to work with as he's barely past the 50 yard line. First and 10, he's not even past the 50 yard line. First and 10 at their own 46 yard line. Copeland takes the snap, finds his man at Cedric Jones, makes a man miss, brought out of bounds at the Arkansas Tech 47 yard line. Copeland again finds number eight, the freshman out of Waycross, Georgia, who actually signed with Troy out of high school. Thought about signing with Troy, but ended up 
He, oh, he transferred he, here. I believe he transferred here from Troy after spending uh, a semester at Troy. We're glad to have him here, that's for sure. Second and three to go for the Blazers at, their, at, the, at the Arkansas Tech 47-yard line. Snap to Copeland. Incomplete pass intended on that play was to a Tyler Arndt streaking across the far side of the field. Only the second or third incomplete pass that Willie Copeland has thrown all afternoon. Willie Copeland looks very, very good, making all the right decisions back there when he has many options to throw to. Three receivers to the far side, Cedric Jones to the near side for Willie Copeland. And there appears to be flag on the play, I believe number 73, Abundio Corchado for the Blazers might have been a little bit jumpy, for lack of better words. Yep. And you can already tell now that, Arc that Valdosta State is subbing in some of their second or third string offensive line. And we are just getting word that the injury to Brian Hardaway had to do with his back. His lower back to be exact as Copeland drops back with some pressure on him. Feels it, gets it off to Zach Parker who's met in the backfield by number 24, Anthony Robinson, the 5'10 linebacker out of Desterhan, Louisiana. Chris Hatcher not, a, not very happy with that performance of his offense there. As for the first time all afternoon, Stephen Wright is gonna be called in for punting duty. And they, they finally do make the call here, Neil. It looks like maybe they're going to go for it, fourth and 11, but up 37 nothing. that would just not be a respectful move. And Chris Hatcher knows all about respect. That he does. And Stephen Wright is set to punt it away at his own 30-yard line. Deep to receive for the Wonder Boys is Chris Gunter. He's going to make the fair catch at his own 22-yard line with about three minutes and 49 seconds to go in the first half of play. Wildcat Tradition celebrates America's winningest high school football program. Join, join coach Rick Tomberlin and new host Monty Long every Thursday night at 8 p.m. on VSU TV cable channel 11. Cole Barthol has now checked back in for the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys to try and see if he can get some offensive production going as he looks downfield Finds a man, it is Tracy Steiger, and he's gonna be tackled at the 34 yard line, but that's not enough, that will be enough for a Arkansas Tech first down. And you see the offensive line saying, move, move, move. That was a crisp pass by Bartha, who's trying to command this offense just to put up seven points right now going into the half. Three receivers to the near side, one receiver to the, <laughs> Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Barthel takes the snap, feeling the pressure. It's gonna be incomplete, intended for Josh Rogers. With that zero on the board, it's really strange for this offense to see. The Wonder Boys have put up 28 points and then two games of over 30 points this season in their three games played. They have never been held to under 28 points so far. Ashley Anders is there barking in instructions for his Black Swarm defense. Second and 10 for the Wonder Boys. Brothel takes the snap. He's being blitzed. He gets it off. It's going to be complete to number 84, Mark Caldwell, who takes it down to the 47-yard line, and that'll be enough to move the chains for a Wonder Boy first down. Barthel looked really good under pressure, and he completed the pass, and he's moving his team downfield, and he was eventually brought down there. Uh, the pressure was by number 57, Bo May. First and 10, Barthel takes the snap. He's going deep, he has a man, it's incomplete, intended on that play was to Luther Stewart, the freshman receiver out of Prescott, Arkansas. Now when Barthel checked into the game, he is making sure he's delivering passes to not one particular Wonder Boy receiver, but he's spreading the ball out. And if you look at their stat sheet, they have receivers all over the place throughout the season, getting a ton, a ton of chances to make receptions. Barthel takes a snap, looking over the middle. I wanted to get Luther Stewart, but it was deflected on the play by number 19, Sean Harris. 
tough play for the receiver to play there, to, to make there. However, the ball did touch his hands, and a lot of coaches would say if it touches your hands, the catch should have been made. Third down and 10 to go for the Wonder Boys. Two receivers to the near side, three receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side, no backs in the backfield for Cole Barthel. Antonio McCoy in motion. Now he's back in the backfield. Barthel takes a snap, looking, looking, going deep. Has a man incomplete intended on that play for Luther Stewart. And you saw how upset Arkansas Tech was. Number eight, Chris Gunter, was wide open about seven, eight yards down the middle of the field. And Barthel couldn't even see him. Barthel was very preoccupied worrying about where his play clock was. He thought it was over his right shoulder, turned out it was over his left shoulder. By the time he saw it, there was about three seconds left on the play clock and rushed the play. And it looks like Sherrod Reynolds is back to return the punt again with two minutes and 53 seconds to go here in the second quarter. McCaskill sets the punt it away. He gets it off. It's a good punt this time. Takes Sherrod Reynolds all the way back to his one yard line and he is gonna let the ball roll into the end zone for a Valdosta State touchback. There is a flag on the play. Let's see what the call is and who it is against. The call is going to be offsides on the Blazers, and it looks like Arkansas Tech is going to decline the penalty. Give me Valdosta State a first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Miss Leah McMillan of the VSU Counseling Center will present I Love Me, I Love Me Not this coming Monday, October 2nd from 4 to 5 p.m. in the Dogwood Room located in the University Union. For more information, please call 333-5940 as we see the Blazing Brigade set to perform at halftime. And they're probably just as shocked as we are to see a 37-0 score with two minutes to go in the first half. Coach Chris Hatcher is probably looking just to eat up some clock here, maybe put another field goal on the board here, eating the score at even 40 instead of 37. Maybe just to eat up the clock, go into the second quarter with the momentum and a shutout preserved. The refs are conferring on the, on the play. Not quite sure about what, Neil, but they are conferring about something. Again, the clock will start now when the ball is put ready for play with the new clock rules instituted by the NCAA. Two receivers to the near side, one receiver to the far side, two backs in the backfield for Willie Copeland. And it looks like he is going to let this clock roll down as it reaches 10 seconds on the play clock with 2.26 to go in the first half of play. Willie Copeland rolling to his right, rolling to his right, going deep, and it's going to be incomplete intended on that play for Zach Parker. Copeland couldn't really get an open look to Parker, so he just tossed that ball out of bounds, obviously out of the pocket. No intentional grounding could possibly be called there. And now two minutes and 17 seconds to go. Copeland's probably just looking to eat up some more clock. Zach Parker to the far side. Cedric Jones and Derek Thought to the far side. Handoff is going to be to Deion Williams, and he's taken in the backfield for a loss of one on the play. And Arkansas Tech is going to take their first time out of the contest. Come celebrate the 25th anniversary of Blazer football with the Chris Hatcher Show, airing Tuesday nights at 6.30 and Wednesday nights at, not at 8 on VSU TV Cable Channel 11, your home for Blazer football. We should mention today, Dustin, that during today's game, the Valdosta State football program is honoring all of the players and the teams that played here back in the 1980s as we are celebrating, obviously, our silver anniversary of Valdosta State football included in there was a 1982 team that started the whole VSU football process. Um, players like Jesse Tuggle were made famous here at Valdosta State. Obviously, a what I personally believe should be a Hall of Famer in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But obviously, tradition is so big 
here at Valdosta State University. Those former teams paved the way for what has become a very, very good program, which includes a 2004 Division II National Championship. Third down and nine to go for the Blazers. Zach Parker, Derek Tharp to the far side. Cedric Jones, Tyler Arndt to the near side for Willie Copeland, who gets his single in from the sideline. Ball, ball snap, Willie Copeland looking deep, finds a man, instead it's gonna be picked off by number 29, Quincy Skinner, and he's got some blocking, but there's also a flag on the play, he's gonna be taken out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Dustin, why do you throw it in that situation? I was just gonna say, that's not what Coach Hatcher wanted there. However, he was forced at a third and long situation to throw the ball. You saw it. on the previous plays, he kept him short, simple, minimizing the amount of mistakes that could be made there. He had to go for the first down just to eat out the clock. And now there's a penalty on the interception thrown by Copeland. It will be an illegal block in the back call against the Wonder Boys, which puts them at about the 40-yard line. Which is a tough field goal. It's a tough field goal. It's a tough way. It's, it's a tough way to go, especially with this Arkansas Tech offense sputtering the way it has. As there you see Coach Hatcher, who just now put his hat back on after throwing it to the ground in disgust after the move and decision that Willie Copeland had made. We are under two minutes to go here in the first half of play. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. RJ Van Hook in motion for Cole Barthol, who takes a snap, looks deep, finds a man. That's going to be almost intercepted by number 39, Jamal Clark, the freshman linebacker out of Jonesboro, Georgia. The linebacker dropped into coverage there and got his left hand on it. Couldn't quite bring it around for the other hand, but did force the play to be stopped there, bringing up second down. Second down, 10 to go at the Blazer 42-yard line for Cole Barthel and this Wonder Boy offense. Snap, Barthel feeling the pressure, delivering the pass. It's caught by Josh Rogers, who's going to be taken down at about the 32-yard line. A gain of about seven, eight yards on the play. Clock continues to roll. A minute 22 to go in this first half of play. 37, no, 37 nothing. Valdosta State is the score. Barthel takes the snap. Looks, looks. He's intercepted. Intercepted by number two, Maurice Leggett, the junior safety out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Another great stop for the Blazers. Look at Coach Anders. He is five yards out onto the field, jumping up and down, ecstatic for his Blazer defenseman. And who wouldn't be? As Coach Chris Hatcher there, just walking in stride, walking in stride. Coach Anders wants that shutout, and it looks as though with a minute to go, the Blazers are just going to eat that clock. Willie Copeland taking a little bit, taking a, taking a Breath of relief here now that his interception didn't prove much on the scoreboard. He's, he's going to take that out of bounds at about the 36, 37 yard line, a gain of two on the play. Forty-seven seconds to go for halftime here. Thirty-seven, nothing about Austin State. But Austin State's offense has looked pretty much unstoppable the entire game against this Arkansas Tech defense, while on the other side, the, the great Arkansas Tech offense has looked anything but against the Black Swarm. Motion handoff is going to be to Rashawn Robinson, and he's got room. He's going to be taken down at the 46-yard line, good enough for a Blazer first down. Copeland coming off his first mistake of the game in the previous drive, looking to recover and get back to the form he's shown throughout the rest of the first half. Or at least just take the team into halftime. And remember, Valdosta State loves to defer it to the second half when they win the opening coin flip. So they will get the ball to start the second half. Copeland back to pass, looking deep, pump fakes, finds his man. It's number 33, Tyler Pruitt. He's gonna be taken down at about the Arkansas Tech 45 yard line. And it looks like that Valdosta State 
might have called a timeout on that play. So Chris Hatcher not done yet in this first half of play. Nope, he does not seem done. He done. He probably wants to put at least three more points on that board. It's going to be kind of difficult with just 18.7 seconds to go in the half, trying to get into field goal range for his perfect so far on the season kicker. Is the future of, volley of volleyball looking brighter? Reminder, the Blazer Sport reports Holly Willis has that story coming up in 18 seconds. Valdosta State up 37 to nothing just before halftime here. And Dustin, you can't say enough about how this Valdosta State offense has looked here in this first half of play. Chris Hatcher spitting out instructions for Willie Copeland. Trying to get into field goal range for number 41, Zach Will Zachary Williams. An injury update to report to you. We saw in the pregame festivities that number 15, Chad Callaway, had a cast on his right leg. So we'll get that information to you if we can. Screen pass set up to Cedric Jones. He's going to be taken down at the 44-yard line. And again, Chris Hatcher taking his last time out. And he's still not satisfied with a 37-0 lead. If the Blazers are trying to put another few points on the board, it's hard to question what they're doing now. If they're going to go and throw it into the end zone, throw up a prayer and hope someone comes down with it, or if they're going to go for the short pass and try to get out of bounds now without any timeouts left to kick a field goal. We were saying stuff about the Arkansas Tech defense really isn't one of the best defenses in the league with numbers such as 25 points per game, 332 yards per game, 116 rushing yards a game, 189 passing yards a game. I mean, this defense really doesn't shine a lot. They did beat West Georgia, and they held West Georgia to 24 points. So you know, you know they've got something but it just hasn't shown itself here in the first half. And their offense is usually doing enough so that you overlook the fact that the defense is giving up that many points, which is why they're ranked number 18 in the nation coming into today. Two receivers to the near side, Zach Parker to the far side. Two receivers in the backfield for Copeland, who's gonna take the snap, looks deep, finds a man, it's Zach Parker. He's gonna get out of bounds at about the 37 yard line with five Copeland seconds to go in the game. Now, if you're Chris Hatcher, do you kick a, what would be about a 54, 55 yard field goal, or do you go for the end zone? It looks like they may be going for the end zone as the special teams is not out on the field with 4.8 seconds left. I don't know. There's no really risk involved as you know, interception's probably not gonna be run back 80, 90 yards here. They Copeland are, drops back They're gonna go for it. They're feeling it. Copeland fires deep. He's got three men. It's going to be incomplete, and we have reached the end of the first half of play here at Baysmore Hydro Stadium. With your score, Barats at 37, Arkansas Tech, nothing. And now, Holly Willis takes us on an inside look at the Barats State volleyball team and what head coach Sia Poyer is doing to lead the Blazers to the top of the Gulf South Conference. We'll be back after this halftime break. Coming into his second year as head coach for the Valdosta State Volleyball team, head coach Sia Poyer is expecting to turn this program around. What does he want to instill back into this volleyball program? A winning tradition. You know, winning. <laughs> I mean, that would be a good tradition to start, you know, and uh, slowly starting to show that attitude. You know, um, like I said, we played some really tough teams since we started, and, you know, it's, it's uh, the long-term plan is to hopefully get us ready for, for conference, so... Not only does Coach Poyer believe that hard work and dedication play a vital role in winning, but team chemistry does as well. They're hungry to win, you know, they're desperate to do whatever it takes. So last spring we had a really good spring season. And that in combination with, with the, you know, the, the, the new girls that came in who are um, committed to, um, you know, to winning and to turning this program around, you know, 
I mean, there really isn't a secret. I mean, it's basically, you know, I guess just like anything, you know, you just got to work hard at it and, uh, and be patient and hope, hopefully uh, it'll pay off for you in the long run. As a three-year standout, senior Laura Lee Atkinson will accept nothing less than winning for her final season as a Blazer. The outside hitter from Tallahassee, Florida, received second team all Gulf South Conference honors last year, but this year she wants her team to make it to the conference tournament. I always stress to the young girls that you only have four years to get it done, so just go every game like it's your last. This season, the volleyball team didn't quite get started how the players or the coaches had hoped, but the future of VSU volleyball is only getting brighter. Where does head coach Sia Poyer see this program in the next five years? Winning conference championships and heading to the national tournament. For the Blazer Sports Report, I'm Holly Willis. Now back to Baysmore Hyder Stadium. From the Conference of the Arts and the Department of Music by Lux of State University, we proudly present the 2006 Reason Brigade Marching Band. For this afternoon's halftime entertainment, the band will present the Spirit of the Romans. We begin this afternoon with a traditional Dixieland Funeral March, followed by the Saints of Archie. Your Dixieland combo includes Mike Podolsky, Ethan Dewey, Bonnie Hill, Josh Moore, and Shane Hatchett.
25 years, five Gulf South Conference championships, 30 All-American, more than 100 All-Conference players, and the 2004 National Championship. Valdosta State Blazer football. Blazer tickets are now available in the PSU Athletic Department, or you can call 333-5890. Join this fall's silver celebration as your Blazers celebrate 25 years of building championship football. Call 333-5890.
Welcome back here on VSU TV as we get ready to start the second half of action here at Bazemore Hyder Stadium. 37-0 Valdosta State is your score as Reggie Vickers kicks it off. Excuse me, Travis Cockerham kicks it off for Arkansas Tech. It's going to be received by Dion Williams. By Dion Williams and Dion taken Williams back to our 17-yard line. And Dustin, you take a look at the first half stats and what are some of the numbers that blows your mind away? Well, there's a few stats. One being Willie Copeland is 22 for 28 today with one interception and 262 yards on the day along with three touchdowns. His longest play today of 58 yards to Cedric Jones, who in six receptions has over 100 yards today at 105 yards receiving today with one touchdown. Those are just some ridiculous numbers for an offense. Especially one receiver taking that much of load as if we see Chad Bryant getting a handoff from Willie Copeland. Gets about a one yard loss in the play, bringing up second down and 11 from their own 16 yard line. Credit Copeland's receivers as he's not really thrown the deep ball and he, he's made some nice passes, don't get me wrong, but his receivers are the ones making the plays today. Second and 12, Copeland takes the snap, finds his man Tyler Arndt, He's going to get right at about the 20 yard line. That'll bring up a third down and eight to go for the Valdosta State Blazers. Willie Copeland, again, great first half for the transfer out of Fort Valley State. Derek Tharp, Zach Park at the near side, Cedric Jones at the far side. William Copeland steps in, has the man. It's going to be incomplete for the second time today. Zach Parker lets a pass go in and out of his hands. Might have heard footsteps there as Parker came across the middle and there were a few linebackers who dropped back into zone coverage there. And VSU will be forced to punt for the second time today. First possession of the second half results in a punt for the Blazers as Stephen Wright is standing back at his own five yard line deep to receive for the Wonder Boys is Tracy Steiger and it's a wobbly punt that's going to be going to get a big blazer bounce and be downed right at the 26 yard line that's where the wonder boys and their quarterback cole barthel will take over for their first possession of the second half what are some numbers that stand out to you in that first half of play for arkansas tech actually neil looks like justin ray is coming out at quarterback right now but some numbers that stand out cole barthel was just six for 18 with one interception, 63 total passing yards through the air. Tracy Steiger, 33 yards receiving. And uh, Justin Ray leads the way in the rushing attack with 29 yards on eight carries. Ray is in the game, he hands it off to RJ Van Hook. He's gonna be taken down for a two yard loss back to the 19 yard line as coach Ashley Anders and his black swarm defense, again, coming in, starting the second half with the same type of, en of enthusiasm in the first half. It seems like Anders has Ray's number on the defensive side of the ball as we see Ray lined up in the shotgun here. Second down and long for Arkansas Tech. Four wide receivers. Handoff is going to be to RJ Van Hook. He's got in a hole. He's got some yards. He'll get up to about the 31 yard line. RJ Tackled on that play by number 23, Kevin Atkins, the rover. Here, Ray hands the ball off instead of taking himself as we've seen him do many times today. And RJ Van Hook with quite a bit of speed there, bursts through the defensive line of the Black Swarm D. Coach Anders giving instructions to his Black Swarm defense as they have a third down and five. It appears that ooh, Melvin Black was a bit too antsy but got back before the ball was hiked as it was. Justin Ray trying to run and he will It'll be very close as to whether he'll have that first down scrambling when being pressured on that play. It will be fourth down and one to go for the Arkansas Tech offense. Here we see Justin Ray just completely torn down on that play by Kelvin Roberts, Everett Kitchens among a couple of Blazer defensemen in for that tackle. Again, the Wonder Boy offense cannot seem to get anything going, and they're forced to punt to Mr. Sherrard Reynolds. Nick McCaskill punts it off. It's a good one. Takes Sherrard back to his 11-yard line, where he's going to 
Try and get to the field position, position. He's got a blocker. 40, 45, 50, 55, 40. Cuts back. 35 taken down at the 32 yard line. Another outstanding punt return by Mr. Everything, Sherrard Reynolds. I'm wondering if this is going to be brought back as there is a flag around the 50 yard line. There may have been a block in the back on the Blazers. Let's see what the refs saw on the play. There is a Blazer down on the field. It looks like it's number 28, Travis Taylor, a very key wide receiver to that Blazer offense. The refs are indeed conferring to see whether or not there is a penalty on the play. It's gonna be a holding call on the Blazers. And we're just getting word here that the previously injured Wonder Boy left guard Brian Hardaway is no longer in pads and on the sidelines. Looks like he will not be going back into the game as the team will tend to Travis Taylor's injury. We're going to take a break here. We'll be back. 11.49 to go in the third quarter. VSU up 37 nothing. We'll be back after this. The Foundation, Keep a great thing growing, America. Tree City, USA. When you plant trees in your community, you'll see an amazing transformation. Trees clear the air and conserve energy. Support Tree City USA where you live. Go to arborday.org to learn which trees to plant where and how to contact your state forester for community forestry assistance. Welcome back here on VSU TV. As you see the injured player there, number 28, Travis Taylor, his knee his leg appears to be very seriously injured. They have an air cast on his leg. He is being carted off toward the hospital here at the side of the stadium. We will get you more information on Travis Taylor's condition when it becomes available here on VSU TV. First down and 10 for the Blazers at, their own, at the Arkansas Tech 42-yard line pass to Cedric Jones, who leaps over an Arkansas Tech defender but is taken down for no yards on the game. Copeland going to his number one target there and just could not make anything happen. He comes back, fakes the handoff. A good block there by number 77, Teddy Morris. And he just got tripped up, Cedric Jones, and could not make anything out of that screen, which has been his favorite play to run. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Arkansas Tech showing blitz. Handoff is to Chad Bryant, and he's got some room, making some players miss all the way down to the 46-yard line. Going to be very close to another Badasta State, first down. Here Copeland gives the ball to Chad Bryant, getting a few touches today. Gets past a few defenders and gets the Valdosta State Blazers another first down. Copeland in very good command of this offense right now. Five receiver formation for Willie Copeland as he's trying to find a man. Hit Zach Parker for what looks like to be a loss of one on the play. Arkansas Tech read that screenplay very well and Willie Copeland really didn't have a lot of throwing room. It looks like now that uh, the Wonder Boys have started to figure out the short plays that Copeland's throwing today, and they're starting to defend against them. Maybe Copeland's going to have to go deeper in the air to make some big plays for the Blazer offense. Three receivers to the far side, two to the near side for Willie Copeland. Snap back, looking, finds a man at Zach Parker, cut along the near side sideline. Taken out of bounds at about the 40, the 38 yard line. Clock will continue to roll here. 10 minutes, nine seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Copeland drops back, finds Zach Parker, the short handed receiver, picks up a few yards on the play, which will bring up third and one on the Wonder Boy 38 yard line. Cedric Jones, Derek Tharp, Tyler Arndt to the far side. Zach Parker to the near side. Rashawn Robinson in the backfield. It's going to be given to Rashawn Roberts. He breaks it's away. It's Michael Terry. It's Michael Terry. He breaks away down to the 16-yard line, but there is a flag on the play, and there looks like to be another Blazer on the field who appears to be injured a little bit. On the counter, Michael Terry gets it, comes across, gets past the defender, grabbing at his shirt, and shows some great breakaway speed there. Number 56, Gerald. Gerald Davis, the outstanding offensive tackle, appears to have gotten injured on the play. The penalty was a chop block 
That's going to be a 15-yard penalty, and that's going to result in another third down try for the Blazers, but this time 15 more yards to go. There you see Coach Hatcher, Coach Bostic, the associate head coach and offensive line coach for the Blazers. It's now going to be third down and 16 to go for the Blazers at their own 47-yard line. They need to make the 37. It was a costly penalty as it takes the Blazers on the other side of the 50-yard line and out of the red zone of the Wonder Boys. Snap to Copeland being pressured, and it's going to be picked off by Andrew Murphy, and he is going to be gone all the way. Touchdown, Arkansas Tech. The second mistake that Copeland has made ends up costing about Austin State the shutout. A nice play by number 44, Andrew Murphy, the defensive end. Copeland drops back, he tips it with his right hand and then takes it all the way to the house. Picks up a block here, it was just a poor screen, ran out there and number 44, Andrew Murphy takes it all the way in the end zone. The junior out of Boonville, Mississippi. Arkansas Tech fans finally have something to shout about here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium as Travis Cockerham attempts the PAT. Snap is good, kick is away, it's up and it splits the upright. So with nine minutes, 14 seconds to go in the third quarter of play, Valdosta State now leads Arkansas Tech by a score of 37 to seven. And again, Dustin, very, very poor job of running that screen pass by Willie Copeland. Well, with the lead like this, it looks like Copeland got complacent with the lead and was kind of lackadaisical in making that play, forcing the ball where it didn't need to go into an interception, but a good play by Murphy, the defensive end, who dropped out and made the play and ran it all the way back, beating Copeland to the end zone. Listen to WBBS 90.9 FM every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m. for the X's and O's show. Join AMAC, Big Red, Fat Flyer, and resident phone yank Tall B as they bring you Badasta's only rock talk sports radio program six years on the air. Call in with your sports opinions at 333-5661. The X's and O's show, that's jock talk without the itch. Coach Hatcher cannot be happy right now, Neil. That play should have never happened. A costly penalty now turns into seven points for the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys. Injury update for our audience. Travis Taylor has now been loaded onto the ambulance. He appears to be heading to South Georgia Medical Center. Again, if you just joined us, wide receiver Tra Travis Taylor appears to have suffered a very costly and possible season-ending leg injury when blocking a punt return that Gerard Reynolds made. We will get you more information on his condition when it becomes available to us. Travis Cockerham now set to kick it off for the Wonder Boys. Back deep to receive for the Blazers will be Gerard Reynolds and Dion Williams. Cockerham gets it up and the kick and the ball is in the air. Deion Williams will fumble it at his own seven yard line, has some blockers, takes it out past the 20 and goes down at about the 26 yard line. So Dustin, if you're Chris Hatcher, how do you approach this new, this new series seeing how Willie Copeland threw a pick in his last throw? Well, here we see Deion Williams get the start for this offense, returning this ball all the way to the 22 yard line. It's, it's time to, for a change here on the offense. It's time to go back to what's worked the past few weeks, going for the deep ball and establishing a bit of a running game because this defense has figured out Copeland's throwing a lot of screens and a lot of slants. Three receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Willie Copeland trying to avoid the pressure. He's going to go down at the 20-yard line. Initial pressure there put on by number 92, Terry McNack, the junior defensive end from Beggs, Oklahoma. And this is the longest the Blazers have gone today without putting some points on the board. Eight minutes, 28 seconds to go in counting in this third quarter of play. Valdosta State sits ahead comfortably at 37 to seven. Handoff is gonna be to Rashawn Robinson, and he's gonna get about four or five yards in the play out to about the 25 yard line. Here Copeland gives the ball to Robinson who tries to bust it up the middle. Looking for a big game, but he eventually is brought down by a few defenders. Copeland now in the shotgun, getting the play in from his coaches. 
Cedric Jones on the far side, Derek Tharp on the near side. Ball is snapped to Copeland, looking deep, looking deep, finds a man. It's Michael Terry, excuse me, Rashawn, Rashawn Robinson. Robinson, and he's gonna go nowhere. He's gonna be tackled at about the 26, 27 yard line. There is a flag on the far side of the field though. We'll check out what that penalty is on. But here we see the play that just ensued. Copeland drops back, finds his running back on the screen. Can't really make anything happen. And these screens just are no longer working for the Blazer offense. We do not know what the penalty is on. We don't know what it is, nor do we know who it's on. We'll get that sorted out in a minute. Copeland needs to find a rhythm again. He was in a rhythm at the beginning of the first half. Still had it in, in the second quarter as well, but he needs to find a way to drive this team downfield. He cannot get complacent with a 37 to seven lead against one of the nation's best offenses. Looks like the call is gonna be defensive holding on the Wonder Bowl boys, and that means an automatic first down. Well, Copeland lucked out there because it was about to be third and eight on the 24 yard line, and now the Blazer offense gets to move up and a new set of fresh downs to work with. Head coach Steve Mullins is not very happy with the officiating on that call. As his Wonder Boys are trying to get something going here in this second half of play. First and 10 for Valdosta State at their own 35 yard line. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Handoff is going to be to Rashad Robinson. He's pulling defenseman with him as he gets a nine yard gain all the way out to the 44 yard line. Whether it's Rashawn Robinson, Michael Terry, Chad Bryant, whoever comes in at running back seems to be able to work their way through that Wonder Boy offensive line as we just watched the replay of Robinson breaking through to bring us to second and one on the 44 yard line. Two backs beside Copeland in the shotgun formation. Arkansas Tech showing blitz, handoff to Rashawn Robinson. He's got room, oh he was tripped up. He could have had a big game but he was tripped up by number 32, Courtney Williams, the linebacker out of Wynn, Arkansas. Again, a little play fake there with Scott Palmer and Rashawn Robinson. Palmer leading the way here. Had a block, but Rashawn Robinson just could not get by that last defender and was tripped up and brought down at about the 50-yard line. Derek Tharp to the near side. Cedric Jones and Derek Smith to the far side. So he's gonna be cut over the middle by, looks, it appears to be Zach Parker on the play. A Little bit of a scuffle with the ball. It, it was Zach Parker with that catch. Four yard game, which will bring up second down and six to go at the 46 yard line. There, look at the Blazers sideline. Trying to bark instructions into Willie Copeland. We saw Josh Bass, the wild thing, doing a little yelling too on the sideline there. Copeland takes a snap. Little shovel pass for Sean Robinson, stopped for a minimal gain on the play. Tackled by number 90, Millen McDaniel, the junior defensive tackle out of Morlton, Arkansas. Under six minutes to go in the third quarter of play, Valasa State up 37 to seven. Scott Palmer checks into the game. Derek Tharp, Zach Parker on the near side. Rashawn Robinson, Cedric Jones to the far side. Copeland Snap drops to back. Copeland. Incomplete pass should have been caught by Zach Parker the third time that Zach Parker has dropped a pass. We've gotten an injury update up here in the booth about Travis Taylor. It was a severe ankle sprain and he has been taken to, taken to South Georgia Medical Center for an evaluation. Again, Travis Taylor, severe ankle sprain, so not nearly as season ending as we thought, but still, whenever an athlete has to go to a hospital, it is an emergency. As Stephen Wright gets into that punt, fair catch is gonna be called for and made at the 17 yard line by Jason Lovingsheimer. That's a heck of a name right there. Lovingsheimer. Sweetelson's a heck of a name too. Yeah, I'm not one to talk, but it's good news that Taylor is just has a severe ankle sprain. It could have been a lot worse. It did look a lot worse, Neil. Dr. Victor Morgan of the VSU Counseling Center will present how to get a good night's sleep this Tuesday, September 26th, 
from 4 to 5 p.m. in the University Union's Dogwood Room. Call 333-5940 for more information as Arkansas Tech is lined up now to start their next offensive possession here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. 37-7, Alaska State is up by 30 points thanks to a tremendous 37-point outburst in that first half of play. Let's see if Justin Ray can get some points on the board. I mean, the Blazers scored 30 points in the first half, 37 to be exact. There's no reason this potent Wonder Boy offense can't do the same right here. Well, they're not going against the West Georgia defense. Even though West Georgia does have a great defense, they're going against VSU. Four wide receiver formation. Handoff is going to be to Antonio McCoy, and he's going nowhere. Led on the tackling there was number 57, Bo May, who has had himself a very productive afternoon. Here's the handoff from Ray to Antonio McCoy, where he is just met by a bunch of Black Swarm defenders who bring him down for the loss of yards. Second down, 12 to go from their own 16-yard line. Two receivers to the far side, two to the near side. Tracy Steiger in motion. Snap to Ray. He's looking. He's finding Steiger in the open. Nice move. Another nice spin move until ultimately he's tackled at the 18-yard line. Taking a play out of the playbook of Willie Copeland and Chris Hatcher there. Ray drops back, finds his receiver on the screen, who puts on a little move there on one defender, spins off another, and eventually gains a few yards on the play, bringing up third and nine. Justin Ray in the shotgun, three receivers bunched to the far side. Snap to Ray, Sherrod Reynolds showing blitz. Throw is to Antonio McCoy out the backfield, and he is met immediately by number 29, Kevin Bray and Melvin Black, the big freshman defensive line out of Apopka, Florida. Another screen taking it, the same play right out of the Blazer playbook that's been working all day, but Kevin Bray, number 29, the junior out of Greenville, Georgia, makes the stop. Nick McCaskill back to punt it away from what seems like the upteenth millionth time this afternoon, and Sherrard Reynolds is back to receive the punt at his own 40-yard line. Kick his way, it's a nice high kick. Chadron's gonna take it at his own 32-yard line, make the initials receivers miss. He's got an alley, look out. Taken down at the 36-yard line by number 82, Robert Woods. Great return there by Sherrard Reynolds who waited for all of his blockers to pick up their assignments here as we see him take the ball here. Waited a few seconds, everyone found their man and he busted downfield crossing well over the 50-yard line and giving Copeland some even better ground to work with here. We mentioned before that both Arasa State and Arkansas Tech are ranked in the AFCA Top 25 poll. To let you know how competitive the Gulf South Conference is, we have four teams that are ranked right now in the Top 25. North Alabama at number three, Arasa State at number five, Arkansas Tech at 18th, and Delta State at number 21. As here we see the handoff to Michael Terry, who gets almost about positive yards back to the line of scrimmage on that play. But Michael Terry, again, we saw this last week, refuses to go down on initial contact and sticks with the play, picking up whatever he can on a busted up play. He, there he breaks off one tackle, comes off another one here, and bounces off another guy and goes out of bounds, refusing to go down. Second down, 10 to go, the 33 yard line. Four receivers for Valdosta State. Handoff is going to be to number 33, Tyler Pruitt, the senior running back out of Fitzgerald, Georgia. And he's going to get about two, three yards on the play. Here we see the handoff to Pruitt, the fullback, number 33. Comes right up the middle there and picks up a few yards, bringing up third down and three to go on the 26 yard line for Arcan on the Arkansas Tech 26 yard line for the Blazers. Cedric Jones, Derek Tharp up top. Here's the handoff. It's going to be to Michael Terry. Look out. He had an all lane, and he takes it down to the eight-yard line. Good enough for Valdosta State first down. Michael Terry showing off some breakaway speed here on the handoff. Going right up the middle. Some great blocking upfield. Just could not quite get into the end zone, but he picks up the first down 
on the eight yard line for the Blazer offense. Zach Parker to the near side. Derek Tharp, Cedric Jones to the far side. And now this is gonna be to Tyler Pruitt and he's gonna try and push his way in before he is met immediately by number two, Jonathan Webster, the D-back out of Batesville, Mississippi, with the tackle for the Wonder Boys. Trying to send it up the gut here. Hatcher makes the call to his running back, Tyler Pruitt, but he is just stuffed at the line by a bunch of linemen there. Shotgun, two running back formation for Willie Copeland and the Valdosta State Blazers. Down under two minutes to go in the third quarter of play. Snap it to Copeland, he's looking deep. He's got a man, it's Derek Tharp. It's six points, touchdown Valdosta State. Willie Copeland makes use or tries to come back after his interception here as we see here. He just throws it up, finds Derek Tharp wide open in the end zone. Then you see Tyler Pruitt throw his hands up. That's a touchdown, all right. Tough to grab that ball over the 6'3", 190 pound Derek Tharp in the end zone. Zach Williams in to attempt the PAT, it's up. It's good, your score with one minute 44 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Valdosta State now up 43 to seven on the Arkansas Tech Wonder Boys. We'll be back with the rest of the third quarter here on VSU TV right after this. Lazy bones, loping through the day. All over America, we're no longer just sedentary, we're stationary. And that's bad news for your bones. Because bones need weight-bearing activity to grow strong and stay strong. So get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Never heard a word I say. Welcome back here on VSU TV, 44-7. The score now as Velasa State continues to pour on their offensive effort here as against the heat, Arkansas Tech. The heat continues to get to the Wonder Boy players as you see one player there with a towel over his head. Probably a wet towel to keep him cool in this Valdosta heat. Arkansas Tech definitely not used to the, to the humidity here as the ball is in the air. Gallahan kicks it away. It's going to be taken by Stinger at his own five-yard line. He hurdles a man, but then is met abruptly by some VSU special team men. <laughs> team men, that's a new word. Taken down at about the 29 yard line, Tracy where it's gonna be first and 10 for the Wonder Boys. Steiger has some really great speed. He just cannot seem to find that one big block that's gonna let him break away for a big run today. First down, Arkansas Tech. Cole Barthel, now into the game as quarterback. Takes a snap, hands it off. It's gonna be for about three, four yards on the play. Handoff was to number 22, Jesse Tate, I believe. Oh, number 20, excuse me, Sean O'Connor. Spread formation for the Wonder Boys. Two receivers to both the near and far sides. Barthel takes a snap, looking, pump fakes, going deep down the sideline, and it's going to be incomplete. Intended on that play was number 84, Mark Caldwell. Defended on that play was Maurice Leggett. Good coverage there by the jack of all trades, Maurice Leggett, the safety rover, cornerback, linebacker, whichever position Coach Anders wants him to play, he's there, and he's one of the better players at each position. There you see Coach Anders always enforcing figure on the Blazers sideline. Third down, seven to go for the Wonder Boys. Barthel takes a snap, here comes the blitz, looking, looking, it's gonna be incomplete. Credit the Blazer blitz that time for that incomplete pass. When you are a pocket passer as Barthel is, it's very tough to get a rhythm going when you're not out there on every drive. Obviously he's having a lot of trouble getting on key with his receivers as another three and out Brings about a punt for the Wonder Boys. Nick McCaskill back to punt it away for the Wonder Boys. Sherrod Reynolds at his own 27 yard line to receive the punt. Snap a little bit low. Punt, very good spiral, takes Sherrod out 
to the 30, to the 26 yard line, and he will be tackled at the 32 yard line, where the VSU will take over with its probably its last third quarter possession, as it, we now have less than 35 seconds to go in this third quarter. For your weekly dose of nostalgia, listen to Lest We Forget as Skip Gildersleeve brings the past to life. WVVS 90.9 Blaze FM celebrates over 30 years of life on the edge every Sunday at 9 p.m. until midnight. For requests, call 333-5661 as Barrett Wilkes has now checked into the game as quarterback for leaving Willie Copeland as he will hand it off to Deion Williams who breaks a few tackles and punishes his way down to about the 36, 37 yard line, a gain of seven on the play. And that play will bring us to the end of the third quarter here at Baysmore Heider Stadium. With your score, Valdosta State 44, Arkansas Tech seven. We'll be back with the final quarter of play from Baysmore Heider Stadium here on VSU TV right after this break. <laughs> You'd think it would be easy to tell which kids have trouble with their eyesight. Here, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. But that's not always the case. Even though one in four Here, children kitty, may have a vision problem, eye doctors tell us the symptoms aren't always so obvious. For clues on how to spot the real life signs of childhood vision problems, visit checkyearly.com. A public service message from the Vision Council of America and reading is fundamental. Welcome back here on VSU TV as we get ready to start the fourth quarter of action here at Baysmore Hodder Stadium. Barrett Wilkes is now into the game as quarterback. It appears now that Coach Hatcher is starting to get in his second string of offense here as we see Jeffrey Felton, Gerald Griffin, and Reggie Vickers into the game line up as wide receivers. Tyler Pruitt and Deion Williams in the backfield. Handoff is going to be to Deion Williams. He's got some blocking to about the 41-yard line. There might have been a fumble on the play. Let's check it out. And it was a fumble on the play. Deion Williams let the ball squirt out of his hands, and it will be Arkansas Tech ball at the 45-yard line. There, you just saw a shot of graduate assistant Sean Calhoun, and he was a quarterback here at VSU for a good four years, maybe even a fifth year, and he was Coach Hatcher's main headset quarterback, a real good asset to his coaching philosophies. Here Williams takes the handoff, has some decent blocking, trying to pick up just a few yards, but obviously loses the ball on the scuffle there, and the ball is recovered by the Wonder Boys. Four, four, four wide receiver formation for the Wonder Boys, snap to Barthel, he's gonna find a pass, he's gonna find Robert, or excuse me, Mark Caldwell, but then he goes nowhere because our man, Maurice Leggett, comes in and makes the leg tackle. We have still yet to see if that surgically repaired shoulder of Barrett Wilkes is able to throw a, a decent pass, as every time we've seen him this year, he's handed the ball off or taken it himself. Three bunched receivers to the far side, one receiver to the near side for Barthel. Snap is to Barthel, nice snap. Throws on the run, but then is met immediately by number 39, Jamal Clark, the freshman linebacker. Pass was complete to Justin McCutcheon. Here, Barthel drops back the good pocket passer, finds number 41 on the play, Justin McCutcheon, and gets a minimal gain, bringing up third and eight on the 38-yard line of the Blazers. Four receiver formation for Barthel, snap, pump fake. He's got a man, it's complete. It looks like it's number four. No, number four is a quarterback, my mistake. <laughs> it's number eight, Chris Gunter, the junior wide receiver out of BB, Arkansas. That will be good enough for an Arkansas Tech first down. Barthel with the play fake there and finds his receiver for the first down, who is eventually brought down by number five, Davian Smith. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side for Cole Barthel and the Arkansas Tech offense as they try and find the end zone for the first time today. Snap it to Barthel. Handoff is going to be to number 15, Tim Childress, the freshman out of Batesville, Arkansas. 
and he gets looks like a about no none to one yard on the play. Minimal gain here on the play for Childress, who gets brought down by a, a slew of Black Swarm defenders there. Michael Cullen, the linebacker, one of the two linebackers here on the play. A lot of second team defenders out there for the Black Swarm defense right now. Second down, 11 to go. Brothel takes the snap, being pressured, finds a man. It's Tracy Steiger, and he's gonna take it into the end zone for an Arkansas Tech touchdown, their first offensive touchdown in the afternoon. And a rare occurrence with this Blazer defense giving up any touchdowns. That's only the second touchdown they have given up all year long. Good pass by Barthel, drops back, finds a receiver who is in between a bunch of defenders in zone coverage who could ju just not get to him in time to prevent the touchdown. You mentioned before a lot of second string defensive players seeing action right now as Valdosta State has this game pretty comfortably in hand here as Travis Cockerham is in to attempt the PAT. It's up and it splits the uprights and with 12 minutes 30 seconds to go in the fourth quarter our score is now Valdosta State 44 Arkansas Tech 14. Do you bring out your second string defense defense players here, or do you leave them in? Uh, I think you want to get them a few reps, get them used to game day playing because they're only used to scrimmaging and practice and going, again, going up against scout team. However, with a 30-point lead 12 minutes ago, it should be safe, but you can never say that it's safe. This is a good, potent offense, and with Barthel dropping back and finding his defenders and picking apart the second string secondary, it could mean a few more points for the Wonder Boys here. The VSU Music Department and the Valdosta Symphony Orchestra are presenting a salute to VSU presidents. Join presidents past and present for this gala opening commemorative concert this Saturday, September 30th at 8 p.m. in Whitehead Auditorium. For tickets, call 333-2150. As there we see head coach Chris Hatcher patrolling the sidelines here at Bazemore Hatter Stadium, very doubtful as to what he'll do with his reserves, seeing a lot more time now. And now Michael Terry and Dion Williams are back to return the kick. Dion Williams has been there before, but this is the first we're seeing Michael Terry back there. Travis Cockerham into attempt, or not into attempt anything. He's here to kick it off, and the ball is in the air. It's gonna be taken by Dion Williams at his own one yard line, kind of stumbles a bit, but picks up his feet, has an alley, still going, still going, and down to the 36 yard line of Valdosta State, where that's where Barrett Wilkes in the Valdosta State offense will see action. Good return here by Dion Williams, the freshman out of Tuscaloosa County, Alabama, coming straight up the middle, picking up some good blocks by Michael Terry and a few other special teams players bring it all the way to the 36 yard line. Barrett Wilkes is indeed still the quarterback in as the Valdosta State offense takes the field. Jeffrey Felton, Jarrell Griffin, and Dedrick Smith to the far side. Reggie Vickers to the near side. Handoff is gonna be a Barrett Wilkes keeper. And he's gonna run for the Valdosta State first down up to the 47 yard line. Barrett Wilkes going right up the gut with the ball, taking it himself here, faking the handoff to Deion Williams and getting some decent blocks, looking a lot like the classic college option quarterback on that play. First and 10 for the Blazers at their own 47 yard line. One receiver to the near side, two to the far side, two, two backs in the backfield as Deion Williams goes in motion, Barrett Wilkes is gonna hand it off to Tyler Pruitt and Pruitt's gonna move the sticks, move the chains to about the 46 yard line of Arkansas Tech. Good enough for about a six, seven yard gain on the play as the clock rolls down to about 11 minutes and 25 seconds to go here in this final quarter of play. We probably won't be seeing Barrett Wilkes dropping back to make any passes here in the fourth quarter. He'll probably be handing the ball off mostly except for on third downs. Just trying to eat that clock, trying to milk it away and make sure that this 30-point lead stays the way it is. 
Four receiver formation for the Blazers. Handoff is given to Deion Williams. He has a hole. He makes the men miss. Good move there by Deion Williams, picking up another Valdosta State first down. You mentioned, though, about how we don't want to see Barrett Wilkes throw. I think, well, here, take a look at the replay first. Here, Williams tries to find the hole, can't really do it, does a lot of shaking and baking, but unfortunately, dinner just isn't ready yet. He gets the first down, though, and I really want to see Barrett Wilkes throw. I want to see how his arm is, is holding up, how his shoulder is holding up, because he is a very reliable backup quarterback. As Tyler Pruitt takes a, takes a hand off, and he's to about the 35, 34 yard line, gain of about five yards on the play. Of course, Barrett was the starter last year, had some very good games, hands the ball off to number 33. Tyler, Tyler Pruitt, Pruitt out of Fitzgerald, Georgia, picks up some gains, but we want to see what exactly is left in that arm that's been surgically repaired. A lot of guys cannot come back from surgery. It's a test. But right now is a test to see what he's got, and unfortunately, we're just not going to be able to see it when, we when the Blazers have a 30-point lead. Here's Barrett. There he goes, takes the snap, finds his man, Jeffrey Felton. Good enough what might be a Blazer first down. However, there is a flag at the 39-yard line. Well, we spoke about it, and we saw it. Looked pretty good to me. For one pass, it's a, not much to assess there, but it was a decent pass, but it may be brought back. Let's see what the penalty is. It is, in fact, going to be a illegal block in the back call on the Blazers, which negates that nice pass there by Barrett Wilkes. They so, see Coach Hatcher pointing somewhere saying, hey, you shouldn't have done that, and this is why. So Barrett's pass essentially never has happens, so we have nothing to assess on Barrett Wilkes' arm. You might say that, but his arm did move on that last play. It did move, and he did throw the ball in the air. It just However, doesn't count. there is no statistical record of that ever happening. Second down and 15 to go for the Blazers at the Arkansas Tech 45-yard line as a band is now playing the theme to Sports Center. Nice, appropriate music. Four receiver formation for Barrett Wilkes. He's going to keep the handoff. He's going to run. He still has some legs down to about the 33-yard line, a gain of about 13 yards on the play. Forget his arms. Barrett Wilkes is using his legs now, faking the handoff to Deion Williams, taking it himself, picking up some good blocking upfield by number 65, Davis Nall, the Duluth, Georgia native. And you know what? A wishbone offense wouldn't be bad to see Barrett Wilkes run with the way he can move his feet. It wouldn't be. But of course, we're never going to see that unless we're inside the five yard line. Barrett Wilkes is going to keep it. Picks up a nice block there by Dedrick Smith, the transfer out of, oh, excuse me, the Hawkinsville native. And he's got himself another first down. Again, a fake to Rashawn Robinson here. Trips up a defender and gets, Barrett Wilkes gets some great block especially by his wide receiver, Dedrick Smith, right there. It seems like whoever the Blazers put in the quarterback position, Arkansas Tech cannot stop them. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Handoff is going to be given to number 22, Rashawn Robinson. He's going to get to about the 19, 20-yard line. Clock is continuing to roll down here. Eight minutes, 38 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Here Barrett stands straight up, hands the ball to Robinson, who comes around left looking for some kind of an opening, cannot find any downfield blockers with any big holes to go through. Second down, eight yards to go for the Blazers. Two receivers to the far side, two receivers to the near side. Tyler Pruitt, the back in the backfield. Handoff is to Tyler Pruitt, and he's gonna be dropped dead. Nice job of tackling there by number 50, R.C. Wallace the Arkansas Tech defensive end out of BB, Arkansas. Pruitt carries for no gain on the play. Pruitt's been getting a lot of touches here in the second half, just trying to get that clock to keep on ticking. That brings up third down, seven, third down three. seven yards to go on the Arkansas Tech 19 yard line. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Barrett Wilkes in the shotgun takes it, looking deep, throws toward the end zone. It's going to be knocked away at the last second by number 27, Zach Knoll, the DB out of Paragould, Arkansas. Great play there by the defensive back as Barrett drops back, a five-step drop, 
looks for Smith in the end zone. However, it is batted down there. Great play by the defender. Fourth down, eight yards to go. Looks like Coach Hatcher is rolling the dice here. And he's gonna go for the first down here. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Barrett Wilkes, snap to Barrett. Looking, looking, finds a man. It's Gerald Griffin, and he will take it inside the 10 yard line. First down, Blazers. Not only can Coach Hatcher risk there because he has the lead, but because of the field positioning he's in. He has faith that his defense can prevent a touchdown if the ball would have been turned over there. Barrett drops back, his arm looks great, throwing a nice spiral across the middle. Finds number 80, Gerald Griffin, the tight end out of Madison, Georgia. And he picks up that first down for the Blazer offense. There is an Arkansas Tech wonder boy down on the field. We'll come back with the final seven minutes, 25 seconds of the game here on VSU TV right after this. Hello, I'm Paul Newman. America is the land of the free and the home of the brave. But we can't forget those who made it that way. Men and women who sacrificed life and limb to protect our freedom. For more than 80 years, the Disabled American Veterans has been committed to building better lives for disabled veterans and their families. If you want to help the men and women who fought for our freedom, contact the Disabled American Veterans today. Thank you. Welcome back here on VSU TV. The injured Arkansas Tech player, linebacker LaMarcus Tucker, a sophomore from Batesville, Arkansas. Blazers now have themselves a first down and goal to go inside the 10 yard line. One receiver to the near side, two to the far side, Barrick Wilkes. He's gonna head it off to Deion Williams who spins inside and is going to be taken down to about the three yard line. And with the run, the clock continues to tick, tick, tick. Deion Williams goes up the middle, trying to find that end zone, but he Cannot quite stuff it in past that defensive line as we're under seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Shotgun formation still for Barrett Wilkes. And the Blazer offense handoff to Deion Williams. He's in this time. Touchdown, Blazers. Seems like I've been saying that a lot today, Dustin. And again, special teams will come out. Deion Williams here, we see him go right up the middle, get through a defender and find that end zone pretty easily. But the kicking game, Zachary Williams back out to kick again. He's been a very busy man and he's been perfect all season. Teddy Morris on that play pancaked his opposing D-line defender. I just wanted to point that out to you. As the kick is away and it's good. So with six minutes and 39 seconds to go here at Baysmore Heider Stadium, the score is now about Austin State 51. Arkansas Tech, 14. I'm speechless. It's been quite a performance here for the Blazers. In the second half, they came out a little complacent, a little not quite as fired up as they were in the first half. However, they've managed to hold on to this lead. Now up 51-14 with 6.39 to go here in the fourth quarter. Incredible, incredible performance by both sides of the ball here against Arkansas Tech. Come celebrate the 25th anniversary of Blazer football with the Chris Hatcher Show, airing Tuesday nights at 6.30 and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. on VSU TV Cable Channel 11. Your home for Blazer football. As we see there, some of the non-college fans of VSU taking some shade seats in as the game is almost over here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off for the Blazers. Tracy Steiger and Devin Ellis back to receive the kickoff as usual. Arkansas Tech not looking forward to that travel back to Russellville, Russellville, Arkansas. Obviously because of the game factor as well, but also because of what's been going on there weather-wise the past 36 hours as Justin McCutcheon makes a catch at about the 28-yard line. There we see Chad Gallahan 
jogging off the field who actually lost his place kicker job for field goals to Zachary Williams after the first game at Albany State. But Galahad has done a pretty good job as the kickoff man since he's been given that role. He has been pinning opponents deep as Cole Barthel takes a snap, hands it off to Sean O'Connor who is met abruptly there by two or three Blazer defensive linemen. I believe it was number 55, Marcus Worlds, a 310 pound junior out of Blakely, Georgia, with a big stop there. That Second, Blazer band's getting louder and louder, Neil. Second down and 11 to go for the Wonder Boys. Four receiver formation, Cole Barthel. Oh, bad snap on the play. The center caught him off guard there. And again, number 55, Marcus Worlds leads the way on that big stuff. Of course, a ton of other defenders came on to stuff him at the line. There we see finally the ball being picked up by the running back, but there's just too many Black Swarm defenders there. The center actually snapped the ball before Cole Barthel was expecting it on that play. Just another one of many bad things to go down today for this Arkansas Tech football team. Third and 13 to go now for Arkansas Tech at their own 25 yard line. Snap to Barthel, pump fakes, looking deep towards the corner, and that's gonna be a pass interference call on Kevin Bray, the DB out of Greenville, Georgia. And finally, Chris Gunter was sitting, standing there with his arms wide open saying, why aren't you throwing flags? Bray probably a little over aggressive there being that he doesn't get a ton of playing time. A lot of these guys in on defense right now are, are backup, second and third stringers, and he probably was over aggressive just trying to make a name for himself to Coach Anders, get himself out there again next week. You mentioned next week. The Blazers do have a short week next week as they'll be having their first of three regionally televised games will be playing at Washita Baptist next Thursday night. We'll get into that more as the game closes out to an end here today. Five receiver formation for the Wonder Boys. The pass is gonna be tipped at the line, almost intercepted there by Mike Fowler, the senior linebacker out of Sylvester, Georgia. There you see Coach Anders working with his second team defense, trying to get them as much time in a real game as he can. Second down and 10 now for the Wonder Boys. Handoff is gonna be to Sean O'Connor and he gets to about the 42 yard line, gonna be a yard or two short of a first down for the Wonder Boys. Less than five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter of play. Here Barkle hands the ball off but unfortunately could not quite get a ton of yards on the play, but they're very, very close to a first down, bringing it to third and two on the 41 yard line. Five receiver formation, Barthel gonna have a little option there. It's gonna be complete to number 15, Tim Childress, the tailback out of Batesville, Arkansas, and he will have a first down for the Wonder Boys. He did get a first down on the play as we watch the option here run perfectly by Barthel. And he is met by immediate impact perhaps even helmet to helmet contact there. I'm not quite sure what I saw, but it was a rough hit. He took a punishment for getting the first down. Spread formation for the Wonder Boys. Barthel trying to get something going here as we approach four minutes, 20 seconds to go in the game. Handoff is gonna be to Tim Childress, and he's gonna get minimal yards there. Stopped on the play again by number 55, Marcus Worlds, number 43, Fabian Wiley. Here we see the hand up here. Childress cannot seem to get a consistent running game going. Never really able to break away from that Black Swarm defense. Second and 10 as Barthel takes the snap, looks over the middle, finds a man. It's Jonathan Webster. No, excuse me. It's Chris Gunter, the junior receiver out of BB, Arkansas, who is becoming, you know, the go-to receiver on this drive. We see here on the replay, Barthel drops back, finds his receiver but his receiver could not gain any extra yards play. However, it is good enough for a first down. LaVar's dollar, the money man out of Dublin, Georgia, did bring him down on the play. First and 10 for the Wonder Boys. Barthel looking deep, he's got a man, 
It's incomplete on the play intended for Luther, Luther Stewart. And again, big plays come up empty for Arkansas Tech. You can't ask for anything else out of Barthol on that play. That's about the third or fourth uh, pass that's been dropped today. And it hit his hands. He had no one behind him. He beat his man by two or three steps, the receiver. Should have been a reception. Touchdown at the best. Could have been a touchdown. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side for Barthel. Getting the instructions from the sideline. Snaps to Barthel, looking over the middle. Pass is going to be intercepted on the play by number 49, Joseph McCauley, the freshman linebacker out of New Smyrna, Florida. The freshman who we haven't seen a ton of this year. Red brought, uh, Barthel perfectly here, gets inside the receiver and makes play. We were talking before the game about McCauley, how he hadn't really been inserted into the starting lineup in the past two games, but here he makes a name for himself and the freshman gets himself an interception. Yet again, more interceptions, more pressure, more turnovers caused by this Black Swarm defense as Tucker Pruitt now checks into the game as quarterback, the sophomore out of Fitz, Gerald Georgia snaps to Pruitt. He finds a man. It's Reggie Vickers, the senior receiver out of Bell Glade, Florida, for about a three or four yard pickup. This is the first we're seeing of Pruitt this year. Drops back, gets the ball to number 83 there, Reggie Vickers, and he's brought down. Now we see Alan Tillman, the Auburn transfer in at quarterback. I guess Coach Hatcher with two minutes and 43 seconds to go is trying to get all of his quarterbacks some looks. Handoff is going to be to Rashawn Robinson. He gets himself around the corner, picks up enough yards for Valdosta State first down, and Dustin, this offense just continues to move and move and move. And with this handoff here to Rashawn Robinson, the clock continues to tick and tick and tick. And Robinson here, you see him getting the first down, but Tucker Pruitt now back in the quarterback. Tillman goes back to the sidelines. First and 10 for the Blazers at their own 47-yard line. Pruitt. Three wide receiver formation. Handoff is going to be to Rashawn Robinson. Breaks a tackle, but then is met immediately behind the line of scrimmage by number 25, DeMond Wheatley, the linebacker out of Benton, Louisiana. Clock now at 2.09, 2.08 to go here in the final quarter of play here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Here comes Alan Tillman back into the game as quarterback. He's got two receivers to the far side, two receivers to the near side and Tyler Pruitt as his running back. Tillman takes a snap. He's gonna fake the handoff. He's still on his feet, folks. Look at that man move. Down to about the 49, 48 yard line of Valdosta State. He went from go having a two, three yard sack on the play to a good six yards. Here Tillman fakes the handoff. Possible, no, not quite a face mask, but a grab by the defender. Tillman, the Valdosta native, Picks up a few yards on the play, bringing up third down and six for the Blazers on the 49-yard line. Tucker Pruitt back in his quarterback. It seems like him and Tillman are alternating every other play as Pruitt tries to get something going, but runs into Nick Pate, the linebacker out of Mena, Arkansas, which will bring up a fourth down to go for the Valdosta State. Unfortunately here, Pruitt trying to make a little something out of here with the QB draw is met by a wall, a human wall, and number 48, Nick P. Let's go ahead and preview the next home game for Valdosta State, as it looks like that we have a timeout on the field. The next home game for Valdosta State will be on October 7th. It's our homecoming day. It's our homecoming game and we will be playing the Mule Riders of Southern Arkansas University. Dustin, what can you tell me about Southern Arkansas? Southern Arkansas, there is one man to watch, and he is the Gulf South Conference leading rusher from last year, and that is D.D. Holyfield. D.D. Holyfield, or it's either Holyfield or Holyfield, one of the two pronunciations, but that man can flat out play. That We were in Magnolia, Arkansas last year, and we only won by three points, 44 to 41. With a running game like that, obviously they have a lot of clock control. And it should be a very decent matchup here at home in Valdosta. October 6th, 1 p.m. here on VSU TV, Southern Arkansas will be here to play Valdosta State. As a fair catch is called for and made 
by number 23, Jason Lovingsheimer. And remember, this Thursday night, Valdosta State will be in action again. It's a short work week for head coach Chris Hatcher and the Valdosta State Blazers. They're, they will be heading to Arkadelphia, Arkansas, where they will be taking on the Wachita Baptist Tigers, one of the lesser proven teams in the conference, but still extremely deadly considering it will be at their home. And of course, Coach Hatcher claims he never looks forward two weeks ahead, but he's got to be worried with that short week that he's not going to get enough reps in. Handoff is going to be to number 20, Sean O'Connor. He takes it down to about the 34-yard line with about one second to go in the contest. And the Blazers have basically just sat on this ball, running the clock down this entire second half as the clock ticks down to zero, and that is the ball game. That is the ball game here from Baysmore Hatter Stadium. Your final score, Fadasta State 51, Arkansas Tech 14. Arkansas Tech now drops to three and one on the year, Arkansas and Fadasta State improves, and they are still undefeated in both out of conference play and in conference play. So for the entire broadcast team here on BSU TV, for my partner Dustin Sweetelson, I am Neil Folger saying thanks for watching. We'll see you two weeks from today, Southern Arkansas, Valdosta State, October 7th, 1 p.m. Until then, this is Neil Folger signing off. Stadium two weeks from today when the Blazers will host Southern Arkansas at 1 p.m. Once again, two weeks from today, here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium, the Blazers will host Southern Arkansas. Kickoff will be at 1 p.m.